Howdy, 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 everybody. Probably not the best way to start a Masa Menos episode, but I've been in, I've been in a country mood for like the last week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, cowboys came from uh, vaqueros, and you know. That's always why my parents were okay with me listening to the country. Like I had to wean them into everything else, but it was just kind of like, well, I mean, there's a relationship. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you think of like yeah, Emiliano Navaida, I think that's who my. Um, I had one cassette, and then I didn't know he had Parkinson's, so that's why I never made anything kind of oh, thing. Shit. But um, it was like, oh, it's just country, but mm -hmm. in Spanish. I mean, it's just in English is yeah. basically the way they took it most yeah. of the time. Yeah. But how you been, man? It's been uh... <laughs> it's been a while, right? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I got blacklisted. You, you, you say that every time, and then I'm just kind of like... <laughs> Damn, this guy has a blue check mark. He has whiskey to make. Like. Man, no, man. I mean, it's been fun, man. I've been on a couple of podcasts from a whole bunch of folks, good people, talking to good um, good people all over, um, making whiskey and sharing it with a whole bunch of good folks, and I'm always a fucking phone call away. So I'm glad to be back. Glad to I be think back. we planned this one like um, – I usually planned with you like a month ago. Yeah, we uh, – I think this is – one of the first times we really had like a solid month of like planning ahead uh as far as like date time um well yeah i straight up okay, asked you so i was gonna be pissed i was like i had to make a thumbnail and research <laughs> <laughs> in one day <laughs> no, 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 in no, between no. taking the dog out <laughs> no, no 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 that was figured out like two hours ago yeah <laughs> Okay, or cool. yesterday? No. So we're all right? on the no, same. No, like yeah, how, whenever you got the information, it was like, that was probably when it was put together. Um, I do not have my glasses. Ra Raleigh? Rayleigh? There you go. Oh, my God. What yeah, like, this dude straight up looks like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> looks like my dad. Holy shit. It looks like Paco's dad. It looks like my uncle. <laughs> 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 like my tío Luis. <laughs> I want to try. Uh, Rayleigh wants to try some whiskey. Well, all you gotta do is come down. I, it's yeah. right across the street from where we live. Yeah. Don't know where you are, Rayleigh, but uh, if you have a total wine in your state, uh, total wine. Still is off. it all fifty states? Uh, it is in all states that have total wine, so thirty-ish minimum, and then four states that we run independent. So Texas, Louisiana. I want to say Illinois and New York, something like that. But, yeah. Uh, well, I don't think if you go to New York. Uh, well, I guess that's where Manhattans are made, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. New York's actually not on my, like, list to go. Yeah. I, I Ever want... since that episode of The Simpsons, I'm like, nope, that's a cesspool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, I'm down from for Colorado. It. Oh, Colorado. Yeah, I think we're in Colorado. Also, shout out. Y'all got really good whiskey up there. Tenth Mountain, Stranahan's, Breckenridge. They got really good Tell beer there, there, too. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tell me. I know I'm forgetting somebody. Um, other substances that are illegal here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> we are. I have been recently diagnosed with glycoma. Ah. So you're about to glycoma. legally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm part of that like gray area. I'm about to be. Well, there's a whole bunch of stores that are like, we sell it. Yeah. yeah. You just need like. The medical the paperwork yeah. yeah i really need to take that autism or adhd test because it's on the list oh really yeah. what? <laughs> what you just need adhd i think so i think it's on the list that's weird i don't because think i, don't... I was gonna say i was diagnosed a long time ago All right. yeah. you could have had a gummy bro <laughs> <laughs> i do not need gummies <laughs> holy shit i am not doing gummies well i thought i was a little bit <laughs> bun bros <Fuck> yeah so <laughs> yeah. I thought it was a little bit of a fun topic before we get into the meat of everything, because uh, the sports show is back. We had our first sports episode in preparation for the um, football season coming up. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Tuesday, right? Yee, yee, Fuck yee. yeah. Um, this is my favorite weight division. I don't know how it just became. I was a UL Romero fan like a decade ago. I've got the double whammy of both. Well, I'm just, uh, I am MJ. Holy shit, man. That is a wild connection. So, Sol Primos is uh, two guys out of California. Yeah. Um, uh, Melvin and Joel, um, who I've been watching for uh, years now. They did a previous podcast now. They do Sol Primos. And um, 
I sent them whiskey and they did a whole episode like oh, shit. Yeah. just yeah. kind of for me and like I was like all right cool but that's a fucking phenomenal connection I'm glad y'all uh, also go kind of cross brand as viewers that's well, maybe we'll insane. do a whole whiskey episode well we do uh yeah uh, that's a off conversation oh sweet all right. <laughs> yeah well and I'm it, here for this one <laughs> <laughs> in the nature of sports coming up like i said this is my favorite weight division in the ufc 100 percent, 100 percent. uh duplessis is fighting adesanya and it, this is like uh there's so much heat in this fight they they fuck it well one of them hates the other one the other one at least plays it off i don't know i think they both hate each other uh, i don't think duplessis does like but I do think that he gets under people's Duplessis skins a very well. Bitch. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, 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 I don't, don't know, know, man. He's holding a belt. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I, the way, if you would have seen the, his face after that fight, you would have oh, questioned how, those? bro. Yeah. You would have questioned how he got that belt. It was wild. I think he genuinely got cheated. Or the guy who he beat, uh, the, um, Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland. Yeah. I'm not also not a fan of Sean Strickland. I respect what he <laughs> tries to do for mental health. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, like... <laughs> Sean Strickland is at this point where it's just, like, 70%. Yeah. Like, 60, maybe. Yeah. But it's just kind of like what he says about standing up for bros, about uh, yeah, your mental man. health. 100%. Great. 100%. Anything that involves politics, just walk out the room, no, don't you? <laughs> It's like it's honestly for him. It's like a flip of a coin. You yeah. just you, you get him on a good day. You get him on a weird day. Um, I keep but, saying that yeah, he's just yeah. like a trans friend away, a trans friend away from oh, changing everything. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Speaking of which, thanks, MJ. Got this shirt at a show. Oh yeah, I was trying to read it. It yeah, was yeah, like be a, gay. Speaking of, gay, do crimes. And listen. listen to We Are the Union. Yeah, that's fair. Fuck yeah. Yeah, they took the picture away. There was a picture of uh, Sean Strickland and Duplessis where they punched each other at the same time, and it looked like the Dragon oh. Ball Z meme. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's great. Well, I mean, the UFC is really good at just burying things a little bit, so it's just kind of like, yeah, we kind of cheated that guy out of a belt. Bye-bye. Like, <laughs> well, it, I mean, I, I think... Sterling so, got cheated out, too. Sterling. He lost to O'Malley. Like, he had to take the fight, like, oh, in two months' yeah, time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, man, I don't know. I think he – I mean, it's hard to say when you get knocked out. When yeah. you get knocked out, it's really hard to say, like, I deserve a rematch. Um, the only reason I see being you get a rematch is if you, like, were the champion and you were a good champion leading up to it. Like, people, for whatever reason, are saying, like, Adesanya does not deserve a championship fight. Man, that motherfucker ran through that whole like entire division. I do kind of understand that argument because I think he's like two and three in his last. Like he's lost. Like so, he, he lost, lost to Strickland. Strickland lost to Parea. Eh, I mean, he's one and two. One and two. That's what it is. He's one and two in the last year, but then the year before that, he was seven and zero. Oh. Who fucking fights more than three times? And this dude was seven and zero. Oh and like. Alex. <laughs> yes But that also kind of defends my point <laughs> Like you know you, it, it, I don't know Alex uh, yeah. won his last fight with a broken toe Ironically when McGregor Missed his fight for a broken toe <laughs> <laughs> Mc, McGregor is The most Over hyped and simultaneously the worst UFC champion we've ever had. He never defended his belt, I he believe. He never defended his belt. He won. Even I know that one. <laughs> yeah, he won three championships. He won in two different divisions, both and like held simultaneously. Then got stripped of one. I think stripped of another later th down the line. He just didn't defend them for a long time. Yeah, and then came back, won one of them back, and then got his ass whipped by Khabib, and it was just like down. And then he was gone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, that's that's why I I understand a little bit. Like they don't fix fights; they just well, they they do put it in somebody's favor sometimes, <laughs> but they're just trying to create stars. Because I mean, I think Adesanya was the closest to a star, and then 
everything after that Paulo Costa fight was like, you're not as explosive as you used to be. And you're just kind of saying weird shit that people are kind of like, I don't I mean, know. I, here's the thing. I think uh, Adesanya started becoming kind of like a Mayweather-esque figure where he was just fancy enough to start like figuring out when his and like how to do his fights to take the least damage, give enough damage, and show it in a very dominating kind of fashion. And then you have the fucking boogeyman, and you have to fucking beat the boogeyman. And he, well, I mean, he did in like insane fashion. And then I just think after that, in all honesty, I mean, I told my brother, I was like, if he beats Strickland, he might take the Duplessis fight or retire. Yeah. And I think he lost the Strickland fight, obviously. So the only thing that made sense was to come back if Duplessis won the title. And it's crazy because it's like everything I said like has panned out to be exactly the way it is. The only reason he comes back is if Duplessis wins, get like that fight, potentially win it, and then retire, or potentially win it, beat Strickland, and then retire. I actually heard some funny... Some, I thought it was actually really good analysis, but of all people, it came from Duplessis and talking about Adesanya. He was saying that Adesanya needs to hate people in order to do well. So like when he fought Paulo Costa... He hated him, uh, but That's if he, true. but if he doesn't hate him, like Adesanya's fight versus Yellow Romero is one of the worst middleweight fights that I think ever happened. Yeah, but I also think so. I'll give you two fights that I don't that technically three um, that I don't think he like exactly hated the person. Yeah, I don't think he hated Yoel, which we kind yeah. of put that together. But I think Yoel also played a very terrible fight yeah that like, was bad it it, it it was i mean he was getting threatened for uh or warned by like ref like contact do, do imp- something movement like yeah. or you're i'm taking points away if you had a fucking point at all so i think that fight was more so yoel being i don't know fucking st- stupid passive and then the other two that comes to mind is against the same guy, but Vettori. Oh, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He didn't really ever seem to hate Vettori, but Vettori hated him <laughs> because he felt like he got cheated the first fight, yeah. which I don't think he did. And then I think he just straight up lost. And then the second fight, like, in the end, fucking Adesanya just, like, straight up went to him and be like, hey, man, at least we can, like, bury the hatchet. Like, you definitely lost this one. And then Vettori's dumbass came up and was like, oh, I don't think I lost this one. He's like, fuck, man. What, what do I got to do to, like... So I don't think – I agree to an extent. You see fights where, like, Adesanya really hates the person, and he's, like, definitely – I think that impacts a little bit more emotionally. But, you know, he hated Barea, and he – They got, like, got a TKO'd. Goku Vegeta thing going on there. Yeah, he kind of got TKO'd. I don't know. I still think that the fight got stopped a little earlier, the first one. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't uh, disagree. I, I, well, um, and then Duplessis' um, analysis for why he lost to Sean Strickland was like, his defense is too good. You got to beat him with volume, which is what I did. That's what he said. I don't, I kind of disagree with that call too. But um, yeah, Izzy's not a volume fighter. Like, so he just sh- yeah. threw like eight punches yeah. and missed seven of them. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. Again, I, I, do, I think it also kind of plays into that whole, like, he kind of started trying to fit into, like, a Mayweather-esque style of fighting where it's like, okay, I just need to be real smart and, like, one, two, three, cool, back out. I hit three of them, one, two, three, I hit two of them, okay, one, two, three, hit two of them, and, you know, and just, like, play it like that. He's card counting. All that. Uh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I mean, pretty much. I think um, that's what it ultimately has kind of come down to, especially in his later years of fighting. But, I mean... Later he years, hasn't... he's like 31. I know. I know. Yeah, That's I, the funny I, thing to me. Yeah, like... 100%. <laughs> um, but, I mean, again, in the grand scheme of things, like, he also hasn't taken very much damage, you know? No. I think his hardest fights as far as, like, damage-wise w- was the first um, Pareja fight, obviously the Strickland fight, um, the uh, Whitaker fight, and yeah. then the Gaslam fight. But Man, those Gaslam are... is a dude that... Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. 
But those are all, you know, fights also spanned over the span of fucking three, four years. So, yeah. you know, it's like kind of one really tough fight a year. Uh, it's not too bad. And he never got knocked out, technically, I guess. But whatever. I mean, TKO, I guess. Well, he got knocked out in kickboxing. But that doesn't count here. But... Oh, yeah. That also, yeah. I guess. <laughs> sure, yeah. But, yeah, guys, I really high, highly recommend <laughs> that if you watch – UFC this weekend, you're going to get a good fight. Um, it's Duplessis out of South Africa, Adesanya, who kind of represents Nigeria. He's kind out of. He was born and evidently raised for the most part in Nigeria, if, if that's what I'm understanding. And then he moved, or his family moved to uh, New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't get it. I loved when he fucking beat Barea and came in, and then the fucking I forgot what it is the. Uh, what what's the uh what's the the ba- what bastard something bastards the um mongols the yeah. mongols the fucking mo- motorcycle like Gang. club <laughs> the fucking maudis they all fucking rolled up have you all seen that where he like comes he comes back from beating Parea. he flew in and they did like a whole parade for him and then the fucking <laughs> mongols came out and just like did their whole fucking haka and i was like holy oh, shit <laughs> when you have these guys just like recognize you as like a fucking oh, gangster like maori the maori yeah yeah yeah, yeah, when, yeah. You, when you said mongols i thought like the motorcycle gang showed that, up yeah, yeah that's him Oh, the, 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 the Mongols are the the Maori motorcycle gang. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. I thought the Mongols were, and this was not based oh, on any. Oh, you're talking about like historical, like the people. No, 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 no. Oh. I, I thought when you meant Mongols, the motorcycle gang, I and this is completely like should not have been used as a relevant historical fact. It was based on Sons of Anarchy, the, the bad... Oh, oh. shit, yes. <laughs> the, yeah. the banditos are based yeah, yeah, on the yeah, Mongols because yes, yes, the Mongols yes, were... Yeah. In, in real life, Hell's Angels were mostly white and the uh, Mongols yeah. were mostly Mexican. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, um, the Mongols... I, I, I could be wrong. Fuck. I, I know. <laughs> Look it up. There's the, the Maori motorcycle game. But either way, they came up and... Um, yeah, they did their the fucking haka like to welcome him back like as the fucking champion. Like, holy shit, that shit was badass. Apparently, oh, the mongrel mob. Mongrel. Okay, all right. I was like one you, letter off. You're right. You're mongrel right. Mongrel mob. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, was, I don't know anything about gangs in New Zealand. I just know that uh, it's really fucking pretty there. Yeah, and uh, they're fucking wild and huge. Maori women, bro. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> M- oh. Minimum six four. Thank you, Makoto, Insane. for the th- Thursday love. I actually just saw them last night. Um, I went to my own concert. Actually, I w- I've been to three concerts in the last week, so it's kind of my own fault that I've been fucking. That I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I did it to myself. I feel you. I feel you. Um, tomorrow, when I get off work, I think I'm just. Play, I'm, I say that, and I'll be playing college football or some shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. I've still yet to get on uh, NCAA. Yeah. Only because I know I'm going to, like, quit working for, like, a <laughs> month if that happens. And when the, that happens. The funny thing is that me and Sam were talking about it, and I got addicted. Sam's done, like, two or three things, but I got addicted to the – I forgot what it's called. It's basically create your own player thing. Oh, yeah. And I made a running back, and Sam made a quarterback, and I'm like, we can I think if we get everyone together, they're, they're going to fall oh, into their yeah. own roles kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, yeah. I had a friend ask if he if you could be an offensive lineman, and I was like, no. no. Yeah, they don't. Uh, they never fucking give love to an offensive lineman, man. It's cool. <laughs> never give love. It's hard to get those stats if it was an offensive lineman type thing. Man, I don't know. You just, like, don't allow sacks and fucking calculate pancakes, calculate, like, aggressive uh, blocks. Uh, yeah. The yeah. funny thing is, as a running back, I have to block. So I'm like, yeah, that's kind of there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The first, the last time I played college football, I was a defensive end. The, and you can't do that either now. What? Mm-mm. Whoa. That's weird. Okay. I guess. It's weird for how anticipated this game was and how they kind of they cut corners for sure. But I mean, there's like a hundred colleges. They weren't gonna get it for everyone. Oh, yeah. That's also true. Yeah. But like for Texas Tech, like um no mascot. It's also the first one like back in college in yeah. a while. Whereas like Madden has no excuse. But, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Madden is uh something else. 
Clem, uh, Texas what's Tech's up, not McKinley? that important. It, Texas Tech is ranked like, <laughs> fifth in the yeah. fake NCAA <laughs> league rules. <Yeah. laughs> that being said, uh, right now my character. Oh fuck. Okay, so they did do this right. So my player right now is sli- assigned to Clemson. I didn't know Clemson's mascot was this freaky looking. Jesus Christ. (laughs) They're okay. (laughs) Nice. Nice. Because he looks like a a, like a weird Yeah, that that looked like um Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey. (laughs) Have y'all seen that? No. (laughs) Hello, Miss McFeely. First time chatter. Actually fucking insane. Well, we're about to get a whole bunch of shit. Like I think Superman is about to be free. Oh, the uh, copyright is gonna uh, end. That's why Winnie the Pooh public was. Domain. Oh, wow, interesting. What the fuck? Wow. The way that they usually get out of it is they like redesign it, and it's like, well, yeah. this one is not copyrighted. Yeah, so we'll get classic like diamond shield Superman. <laughs> well, and then there's supposed to be like this whole universe for that blood and honey thing, Bambi. I forgot Rage of Bambi or something, or Revenge of Bambi, something like that. Oh, man. And then there's another one. It's close to having a Deer Avenger movie. (laughs) You remember those old people? It was like Deer Hunter was like the main game. Dude, I I made a knockoff game where he plays the deer. Dude, I saw saw this in fucking (laughs) on the Chive like a decade ago, and this (laughs) is what I thought of. (laughs) Ben- <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> but all right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the intro. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mas o Menos Mexicanos, a Mexican culture podcast where we talk about kind of being Mexican, kind of being American, and definitely being both. I'm not alone, though. My name is Marco, and I will be your host, but across from me, we got... I'm JJ, and next to me... Emiliano Angel Guajardo, El Whisquilero. So... When you t- uh, so this is actually the all Emiliano episode. I was I've been kind of gassed out, unfortunately, recently. Well, I'm wearing the bun. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, all Emiliano. <laughs> Damn, I could do that too. <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't know how to give him a bun though. Okay. No, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I asked I asked Emiliano what would you like to talk about? And he actually gave me like five things that were all amazing. So amazing that two of them are being pushed to September kind of thing. Um, One of them just as a pre-show is just like Hispanic scary stories. Um, I could have almost done that because I didn't know that. So basically everybody that's into that Halloween goth culture, they're, they're admitting that they're, they're losing the fight to Christmas. Like towards the end, it's like Christmas decorations are already at Walmart. Kind <sighs> man, of I deal. know, man, it's crazy. But I like was telling my wife, like we were walking around Target and um, there's already Halloween shit up. I'm yeah. like, fuck yeah, we're here, baby. <laughs> that, that's what I was going to say. It's like, cool. We lost the last week. Christmas can have it. But now every day after July 4th yeah. it, it's spooky season. <laughs> it's all, right, man. It's all there. And you know, I'm already feeling the like, energy of it. I'm just like, you know what? It's not 110. This feels kind of cool. Like, you know, I think I'm feeling a little nippy here. Halloween's it. It's only 98. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, man. Um, Got to put on my long sleeve. (laughs) Sam, who isn't present here because he's spending today with uh, his beloved, actually bought her a Halloween decoration that he found at Lowe's. Fuck yeah. My man. Good man. Is it the 20-foot fuck-off skeleton? Well, I think she lives in an apartment, so that probably wouldn't work. You you, you can put that in the balcony. (laughs) That's what my brother did. (laughs) Um, Sam purchased her some, um, like, because she, this is the way the Sam worded it. Her, her favorite ride in Disneyland is the Haunted Mansion. Uh, so we bought her those books that move kind of things. So oh, that animatronic nice. thing. Hell yeah. And uh, he already made a 
it's on his story that he was playing with it and stuff. And I was just kind of like, oh, well, that's great. Everyone seemed very happy today. I, if, Jessica, I don't think you watched this, but if you did, happy birthday. That's his girlfriend. No, I know. Oh, okay. I was going to... Never mind. It's okay. You're going to talk shit? Not about her. Oh, about Sam? Yeah, not being here. Oh, yeah. Well... I know. <laughs> I know. He's not here for a good reason. Good job, Sammy. Good good on you. Well, I mean, we got Whiskey Man here. We're talking about Lowe's. The first topic that we got that you wanted to talk about is industries where we'd like to see more Latinos or people of color. So why'd you pick that topic? Um, I picked the topic for kind of the same reason I've been going on, like, a lot of podcasts recently. It's, you know trying to get more people of color into the industry i've had uh the like i've been on plenty of podcasts and been part of conversations for certain podcasts so pre-show we talked about uh sold primos who are um a mexican actually sorry i should clarify mexican and guatemalan uh salvadorian duo melvin is uh half and half um we're not all the same guys we're not all we're not all mexican <laughs> um but um no and uh when i go to miami i'm cuban <laughs> yeah, exactly we're, we're not just like one well whole you can swap. talk like a cuban I'll be... <laughs> so i've had to talk to them <laughs> <laughs> well, <cono. laughs> Coño. um no but uh uh you know so sol primos um trying to work with um not that serious podcast which is a all black men podcast out of northeast jersey pennsylvania kind of area oh damn um y'all the mexicans for sure uh and then doing some work with other folks who are obviously og east austin people of color um that being said spirits industry you know i'm trying to get everybody a little bit more kind of educated on the fact that we have a very clear stamp on you know the spirits industry as a whole and we're creating a name for ourselves in texas we have i mean i made distiller but we also have some really fucking badass people of color mexican distillers across the state and yeah. you know one at the fucking king of texas whiskey garrison brothers they have you know their mash house master is a woman uh oh. mexicana who just won um best female distiller in the world co champion or co best female distiller in the world with a mexican um tequila a tequileña um and she yeah there you go holy shit yeah i'm, I'm gonna, good at my job yeah look at you yeah, i'm gonna fucking call that clip it clip it, clip it. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna send it to her but uh yeah sam sam's a very good friend of mine um i've had the honor to like meet her and befriend her in the last several months and she's a badass and i've looked up to her for quite some time now uh miguel perez up in 1845 distillery in uh north eastish dallas area uh He's been, I mean, he's the head distiller, if I'm not mistaken, the first Mexican head distiller in the state of Texas. Uh, Julian, I don't want to say, I'm, I'm not going to guess his last name. I don't remember his last name. But Julian, who's also the head distiller, I think, Cubano, but I'll just say Latino, um, at the largest Texas distillery in Houston, Giant, Texas. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, just trying to put a fucking stamp for us in um the texas industry man um whiskey industry a, a kind of larger this guy? but no he is the opera or one of the operations there you go julian yeah it's funny because he's on the website itself like you oh uh, uh, yeah he's got a bio <laughs> yeah he's got a bio um no julian who's uh again head distiller over there he's a fucking badass he runs that shit and that shit is crazy i mean y'all have seen still austin yeah they are easily 50 times larger gotcha. damn yeah like no, no kidding with that. giant well so <laughs> yeah no giant texas whiskey um mexican owned first mexican owned oh, distillery okay. in the state of texas um and uh put it in perspective they, we had what y'all saw were 1800 gallon fermenters mm. they plopped a 40,000 gallon fermenter in the middle of a parking lot and build a building around it. 
<laughs> yeah. So these guys, uh, they're no joke. That's but nonetheless, of empire shit. Yeah. Let's uh, put that there. <laughs> exactly. So nonetheless, you know, um, I've been honored to talk with a whole bunch of folks. Uh, talked with one of my kind of like whiskey idols um, and one of the world's greatest sommeliers in whiskey, uh, Jack Bigado. I was on his podcast uh, two weeks ago, I believe. Um, African, I think, uh, Ghanaian? I don't want to guess on that one. But he's uh, Hood Somalia, goes by that on uh, Instagram, and I think pretty much all social media. But, yeah, man, you know, more Mexicanos in the fucking whiskey community, man. It's, uh, it's a badass industry. We've got a good foothold into it. We got a lot of fucking history in it. I mean, the fucking whole bootlegging, you know, kind of trail ran through Texas into mm-hmm. Mexico and back and forth. Um, and a lot of us, you know, born and raised in Texas and Mexican descent, we got families who were bootleggers and bootleggas and fucking... I've actually never heard a story about Mexican bootleggers. Yeah, like... my so my... Um, the way the story goes is my great grandfather, which would have been my dad's mother's father, mm-hmm. uh, he was a bulega, which was just bootlegger, um, in uh, South Texas. So my dad's mother's side of the family were all Texas born, but his her dad apparently got in bad business with Al Capone. Oh shit! And they fled to Mexico, so they immigrated back to Mexico and just stayed there. Um, in the mix-up, lost all their birth certificates and paperwork. So the whole joke was that, and it was legally documented. Coming back across, my abuela had two birthdays because she had her original birthday, which she knew, and then she had the second birthday that they just kind of. St- Damped on it, yeah, yeah. When she my was mom's coming, the same. Back. exactly. And so a lot of a, a lot of that shit happens, right? For a lot of us who are coming back and forth. Her, but. my mom's actual birthday, I think, is the twenty first of February. But on her driver's license and everything, for the longest time, I think she finally got it fixed. Said the twentieth. So, <laughs> yeah, for whatever reason, man. Yeah. But yeah, no. So um, there's a lot of. I mean. A lot of, especially along the border, you know, a lot of bootlegging history um, with Mexicanos. Um, the one of the co-owners and founders of Banner Distillery in Mainer, um, I, Jimenez, I think is his last name. His family were old East Austin bootleggers back in the day, and he's Mexicano. So you know, there's a whole kind of history that's kind of untouched and untapped uh, and untold also uh, of Mexican bootleggers in the state of Texas. So. The only thing that I know about, um, because I'm not as knowledgeable about you, I I love whiskey and can make all sorts of recommendations, but I can't talk about making it uh, or have friends that make it besides you, kind of. Um, But I do know when it comes to beer i was amazed by how small people of color's role in it was like i don't know if it's the same as in whiskey but like i think austin has one black owned um beer making place and i was just kind of like damn like this and this was before covid i was like there was 30 breweries here and only one of them was black owned yeah and I think it's more than 30. Like, we got to acknowledge it was, like, a lot more than 30. But, um, so, Marvis, who is goes by the middleman on Instagram, he is, I believe, co-owner. Yeah. Or at least somewhat kind of business partner with um, that brewery. I don't remember which brewery. I want to say it's Fast Friends. I could be wrong. I thought... Fast, oh, like I guess uh, Fast Friends is right by our house, but um, yeah, they're on the other side, yeah, of the highway. Um, oh, then it's No Vacancy Brewing, which I could understand confusing because they're both green. 
it was on no, the other he told, side. Of he home. told me it was Fast Friends. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. he told me Fast Friends. Oh, but... sorry. I thought you were looking at that, saying it's on the other side of the highway, but you were looking at where you uh, were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So other yeah. side of the way. To yeah, because no yeah. vacancy is down from where you were. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. No. And I know um, Saint Elmo. You know that yeah. has to be by a white guy. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely it has to be. Um, but uh, yeah, you know I don't know a lot of the history of brewing i mean yeah. uh, i'm just gonna be honest uh whiskey is definitely my game and my kind of whole shebang but i think some of it might just come down to the ingredients because like well i mean in, in general fuck grows hops what was gonna say <laughs> well, in general right now no matter what kind of be- uh, beer you make or who owns it i mean we're seeing a, ba- a vast shrinkage where we might be down to less than 15 by the end of this year. Hey, we can open one. I've had that beer making kid in the, <laughs> in the food closet for like a year now. <laughs> well, on the note of just people of color owning a brewery, I remember in the heat of, I believe this, this was in the heat of, of COVID, the Black Lives Matter protest took root because of what happened to George Floyd. And, I just thought it was cool of all the people to take a stand and do something about it. Where the brewers in San Antonio, they started the yeah. Black is oh, Beautiful yes. beer. That's so fucking sick. And look, it has a little bit of art on the can. And mm-hmm. the beer was actually, this is one of my favorite stouts. And I don't usually do stouts, especially Whoa. in the heat of summer. Oh, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I get you. Uh, I'll, I'm not going to say no to a stout. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. But yeah, uh, that was something that I high key recommended, and that's when I learned a little bit. Um, COVID was a very scary time for a lot of people, but for me, just because there was extra time to research everything, I was I always thought it was cool to learn. Like, here are all the black owned restaurants in mm-hmm. Austin, all twenty five of them. Oh no, <laughs> no, 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 no! There's there's a lot more. There's plenty more. Well, some of them were food trucks, so there has to be more. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. If you're doing food trucks, yeah, yeah, we're fucking doing the whole thing. But yeah, no, there's definitely more than that. Um, Chaz, who is, I believe, founder, but definitely is a huge part of Austin Justice Coalition. Um, mm. Very good friend of mine. He does. I think it's in February. No shit, right? But um. He does a black food week and he will just like go on social media and just like blurt out like, hey, we're going to be here all these like days, all these weeks and highlight folks. See, this was the list that I had saw. That that's why I thought it was like 20 ish. I... Oh, no, 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 no. He, ha- he had a phenomenal list. Uh, it was like, it, yeah, it's definitely way more than that. Definitely way more than that. Because oh, I mean, if you the got rolling roosters, I didn't know that. Yeah, because you got to think about. It. So, like, if we're talking about if we're including tr- food trucks at the corner of uh, across the street from Nickel City, yeah, there's like yeah. five food trucks in that little lot. Oh yeah, all oh, of them yeah. black owned. Oh, that's, <laughs> you know? true, so, that's true. Yeah, you know, we're got definitely ox talking about. I want them. Oh, bro, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I can never remember the fucking name to save my life, but Me it's neither. Jamaican food. <laughs> It's Jamaican food, and they're, like, authentic. Like, you can barely understand them, kind of Jamaican. Uh, Holy shit. It's fucking good. I will say on, on that note, something that I thought was funny, because all I was doing was looking up giant um, Texas distillery, and this article came out. Why is L.A. maybe the worst place to make whiskey? I thought that was funny. But I know why. Wow. Yeah, because it's California. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I have it against. No, California. no, it's fine. I, I, but if, if, but even if like you take that attitude aside, water is stupid expensive. In um, <laughs> look at them fucking trading beer over there. No, uh, no, I, I mean, look at, in L.A. Water is already okay. scarce to the point that you can't fucking um, get a glass of water without requesting it at your Holy table. Holy shit! That makes so much sense. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Let alone space. Can you imagine, like, owning a warehouse in yeah. L.A.? No, oh, hell no. I, I I don't know how San Francisco has a distillery. San Francisco has a yeah. distillery? It. Do they make shit with ocean water? <laughs> no. I, I, I'm going to keep saying this, and I'm so sorry for those folks who actually make the whiskey. Old Potrero, the most vilest thing I've ever drank. <laughs> I've never tasted this, but it tasted like old scabby band-aids. 
Damn. That is what I try. I I have a old Instagram post somewhere in the fucking archives that I like had a quarter of a gallon of orange juice left mm-hmm. and like a third of that bottle left. And I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, this is not good. I'm going to mix it. So I mixed it and it was still so bad. I had to put like uh, another half a fucking liter of Sprite or something into it. I don't remember what the fuck the concoction was, but it was not good. It is easily the worst whiskey I have ever fucking had. I've had some pretty bad whiskeys out of a plastic bottle, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but plastic bottle whiskey just gets you hung over. This <laughs> will not make you throw up. Uh, the name Treecraft keeps coming up a lot. That's about it when I Google oh, that, 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 oh, that, 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 that one. <laughs> that, that bottle. Holy shit. Holy shit. That. Ugh, ugh. Yeah, if. Um, it, oh my god yeah i don't know i, I got no that looks like it's, wine it's, bro i was about to say it's like it, well, a bottle yeah. of uh, it even has the little fucking Cointreau or something yeah. <laughs> yeah it has the what do you call it the little dimple yeah under? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah, even yeah, has it's that a, it's yeah. wild I, I don't know i mean maybe because it's just like kind of wine country i don't know i know it's like the whole state's wine but whatever <laughs> <laughs> no half the state is desert <laughs> the whole state's winers yeah Sorry. that's true but um uh, I'm JJ, sorry. what industry would you like to see more Latinos in? Uh, so this is one that I also worked in, like, like yeah. him, only uh, it also made stuff not as great. But, <laughs> but uh, it's still a relatively young industry compared to, you know, everything else we've talked about. And there's a lot of things wrong and broken with it that need to be fixed. <laughs> but uh, it's video games, the video game industry. There is... Currently, I don't think there is a like figurehead of a of major video game franchise mm-hmm. that is Latino. Like, mm-hmm. uh, there's no Hideo Kojima uh, that's Latino. There's no Corey Bar Barwag. I, I keep forgetting his name. Dad of Boy, the guy that directed Dad mm-hmm. of Boy, <laughs> mm-hmm. and you know. Video games are collaborative, so there are definitely Latinos in there, like working, uh, doing some. I worked in customer support, so yeah. like, your shit broken. Well, you talk to me, angrily, most of the time. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's what I was thinking of the Doom guy, but yeah, that's so also like he's. I'm tying him into the last topic, which is the heroes, uh, yeah. just to like put a nice little bow on okay, this. Okay, He's the cool, one that I'm going to cool, talk cool, about. Cool. I I did look up. Um, yeah. Don't mean to interrupt too much. Like um, Hispanic game studios, we got or Latino game studios. We got Ace Team in Chile. Oh mm-hmm. no, yeah. Now with indie games, there are a lot of studios, but I'm saying there's no uh, like Neil Druckmann. Yeah. There's no one that's like. You think of The Last of Us and you think of Neil Druckmann. There's none of that. Like, there's mm-hmm. no one franchise that I can point to and be like, oh, yeah, that's that's ours. That's our guy. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, there's no, like, real creator. Right, of, like, yeah. yeah. Like, like, you got your Halo, you got your Doom, you got your fucking ball, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, I get you. Yeah, yeah. Th- and, and that's mostly what I mean. Also, like, with the indie boom, there's a lot of studios in, you know, all these other countries, like, um, there's a couple of games on my wish list that are from a Mexican studio on Steam. Mm-hmm. But uh, <clears throat> from my time at Blizzard, and Blizzard was probably one of the most diverse places I've ever worked at. Yeah, to, yeah. To their credit. Really? Yeah. No. Holy shit. It, I, my side of it might be a little skewed because it was like, well, we're going to squeeze all you Spanish and Portuguese speakers together. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> all you guys been that there, done that. <laughs> all you guys that speak foreign? Yeah, in there. In in the hole. <laughs> it was a very nice hole. Uh... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, but no, even... Uh, outside in the other departments my my scope of Blizzard was rather limited because the main office is in California yeah so our office was primarily customer support and you know like uh, the social media uh, people were here Mm -hmm. based in Austin and some of the uh, 
mobile developers. So like if Hearthstone broke, some of those guys were here. Uh, and I did see, you know, people outside of customer support that were, you know, Latino or from other countries in those other divisions, primarily in the social media one. But when it, whenever they would send me pictures of California, I'd be like, that's a lot of honkies here. <laughs> Actually, I had other friends that would complain about <laughs> the, um, Blizzard was very white, and that's just kind of why certain people wouldn't get promotions. I don't know how true it is, because I can't. Uh, I've also not heard honkies in like a long time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that almost got me. Holy uh, shit. So, again, my scope was very limited, but I can only speak to my experience. The only mm. reason I didn't get, like, any major promotions or whatever it was because in customer support... You can say they're racist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You I'm could kidding. end up like Disney, bro. Like, oh, fuck, we, you can't sue us because you have Disney+. Plus. Yeah. <laughs> I still have Overwatch installed. They got me. <laughs> uh, no, uh, From my very limited scope... <laughs> see, me and her dad still... Yeah, say, oh. <laughs> seems like it. Do you Sorry. know the background to the word honkies? Please, go on. <laughs> Is it like the backward to or back story to uh, Cracker? Uh, I actually don't know where Cracker comes from. Oh. I just know where Honky comes from. Well, where's Honky come from? So Honky came from white people pulling up to pick up black prostitutes, and they would honk their horns. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> 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 There's slurs, bro. All of them are bad. Like the funny thing Christ. is, like we just accepted them because they were uh, they've been around so long. So now we're just like, oh, Honky is funny, but like. Calling a, someone like a dude in 1880 was like, we're fighting. I yeah. hope you know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's just like, what's up, dude? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cracker was a uh, reference to the the one who would crack the whip. Oh. Because that was a job. So yeah. it's like, ah, watch out, the cracker's coming. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I changed I, that I, joke in 3 South <laughs> real bad. <laughs> I legit thought that was uh, just yeah saltine crackers thing, right? White, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, no, no, no. no. The joke in the short-lived MTV so. cartoon Three South that yeah. I really liked was there was the token black character in the show, and he called instead of calling like every white guy honky or cracker, he would call them triscuits. Because <laughs> triscuits are crackers. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, no, but getting back to yeah. like why I never moved up the the ladder in in Blizzard, for my personal experience, my personal like you know development there, I was like none of these skills are transferable. Nothing that I learn in CS is really transferable to like, oh, you were really good. At, uh, at, at WoW, like you have all these level 80 characters in every class. You know what? We should put you on the Hearthstone development team. Like, no, that's not going to fucking happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, John John, uh, John John from Eagle Pass. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Saying, hey, thanks, bro. Also, earlier, I saw somebody from fucking, are they actually in El Salvador? I think so. Holy shit, that's crazy. Somebody, because uh, because I put on the um, put on the the I was gonna say MySpace page, the Instagram. I saw page, that. Yeah, I saw that get like fucking bubbling, yeah. and I was like, no way, this man's about to fucking. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, on the Ages. Instagram, when I asked the question, somebody said the president of El Salvador was their favorite hero. The current president. Mm -hmm. The one that's like has all those super gels and like yeah. brought crime down from like. Interesting. I don't know enough. All I know I, is about I, the I super mean, gels. I'm out of I, my depth here. Yeah. <laughs> I know I about him. In the Philippines I just was know... kind of cool, and then I found out like, oh, you're jaywalking, jail, death. <laughs> <laughs> not, never mind. This might be too hard. <laughs> yeah. I I mean I'm moderately educated. I'm educated enough on the topic to kind of like uh i am from el salvador and currently in el salvador yep. oh, well dope. fucking dope. i don't think it was ricardo that made the comment though do you like your president all right um no i said i don't think it was ricardo that made the comment. i don't but i'm saying yeah uh, do you like your president? straight to jail <laughs> 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 uh 
Uh, I'm just educated enough to be able to understand what's going on. I don't know if I'm educated enough to exactly develop my own kind of opinion on them. But. Yeah, it, it's just kind of one of those things when you're not in that area or of the know, basically. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm not fucking refreshing my page. Um, as someone who lives here, I call our, our president is what I call an acquired taste. <laughs> that's that's fair. Yeah. Um, Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's just for me one of those things where it's just like I'm not cool. keeping up with the news all the time to know if it's good. Like. Uh, another a weirder example about this is like Argentina. Like God, that guy is I the dumbest every, person. Yeah, I mean, we all know as Latinos. Yeah, yeah. Argentinians are just Italians that speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> you can love Messi as much as you want, but yeah, that man is Italian. Roto Scorpio. At least in my position, I can tell you that there was no non compete because there were several people that were like. They got hired on to Blizzard because they were temp to hire, at least when I got hired. I was a temp, then full employee at Blizzard. Immediately when that transition happened, uh, like three people jumped ship to EA. Like They had already signed the paperwork, then they got their first paycheck, and they are like, I'm going back to EA. <laughs> wow. wow. Blizzard does notoriously, I'm not the only former Blizzard employee that, that has gone on record saying this. Mm -hmm. They do underpay a lot like really? that is one of their well any place knots. that's cool to work because i've yeah. heard i've heard it of blizzard actually most of these places are dead um what was the the place that made red versus blue they also rooster teeth, rooster rooster teeth, teeth yeah. chive i've heard it from all three of those places that it's just kind of like people would pay us to work here so that's why we're going to pay you 12 13 dollars an hour yeah and it, there is like kind of a almost cultish mentality with some of the people i was like the one that's not sipping the kool-aid because i was like i don't give two shits about wow like you guys pay me <laughs> that's why i'm here it's fair. fair they gave him a sword <laughs> yeah they did give me a sword that that was cool of them but then that's another thing where it's like the sword probably could have easily been a thousand dollar bonus at the end of the year instead. Of <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Also, we got a clear answer <laughs> to. Uh, well, Ricardo the... kind of likes him, but I don't know. I don't like Reagan though. Uh, you know what's funny? Uh, that's though? wild because if you're making a comparison to Reagan, Reagan was terrible. I will say, Reagan. Not about Reagan, but I will talk about LBJ. Uh LBJ was a president that was a, a acquired taste for me. Really? Yeah. I think LBJ was the last greatest president we've ever had. Or we've he was, had. He was really great. I mean, because after that, but, it was just all fucking pop stars. But I learned... Ergo Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> was but I learned when it came to LBJ that um, he... Because at first, I heard the bad things about Reagan. Um Giant penis, like used oh, to you call mean up. LBJ. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the bad things you said, about LBJ. Yeah, bad so, things about LBJ. Oh, okay, you said Reagan. Oh, sorry. Bad <laughs> things about LBJ. Like he had a giant penis, so he used to just call tailors and fuck with them. Like mm -hmm. I need more space for my bunghole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Jesus Christ. laughs> um, was another asshole thing that he did. He peed on his Secret Service. <laughs> and that's kind of funny. <laughs> I, like, I laughed. <laughs> I know, right? I'm, I'm um, what else? It was the sixties. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, partially fair. I don't know. Uh, um, not okay. But and then was the, the he did. There's two more things that I can think of. The other one is like if somebody that was going against him was trying to get this proposal passed, and it's like, hey, LBJ, let's. Uh, Let's talk about this. And he'd be like, uh-huh. Okay, follow me. Follow me. I want to hear your things. And he'd walk into the bathroom and take a shit. <laughs> <laughs> and talk about power play, man. <laughs> <laughs> shit. And then the all the, this one's not as funny. And it was just kind of that he um, used the N-word a lot. Like, he was not – he was very – Really? Yeah, he was very – I, I want to say he was racist, but – but he was also very much like, but we're still Americans. Like, we're going to push civil rights as far as we can because right now I have a blank check because JFK just died. So I can do whatever I want. And I want to be like Teddy Roosevelt and 
pass as much progressive legislation as I can. So, first off, side tangent. Yeah. This isn't spooky yeah. uh, season or yeah. the spooky episode, but are you seeing what I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Good. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, but... Uh, so well so lbj he um so his story is interesting just because obviously in texas was very historical like republican Mm -hmm. played republican did the whole fucking thing um his story is that he did the whole kind of like republican card for a while got his way up then when he went to south texas and then supposedly east austin and saw the lifestyle that these poor black and Mexican kids were living in, that's when he jumped ship to blue and uh, essentially rode that card into like, no, you know what? The fact that there's children in this like state, let alone this country that are living and studying and going to school like this, it's fucking ridiculous. And it was because of LBJ that we got a lot of educational change um, and educational progression mm-hmm. in uh, the U.S., but Texas specifically. At that time, that was when Texas really exploded for education yeah. um, and was considered one of the best states for education. Now we're kind of just like, whatever. But, um, but yeah, so LBJ, like... Well, we had some some good years. Uh, yeah, no, we, we did. And like I said, LBJ, last fucking great president um, of. Uh... Other cool thing on that note of um, LBJ doing cool things for Mexicans is, so I heard this story and it was just kind of uh, some somebody's because he was president during Vietnam, mm-hmm. and somebody called. Oh, yeah. uh, I, I, I heard the story too. Yeah. Um, somebody called him and he's like, Hey, um, my son died. Like, he's a war hero and everybody's refusing to bury him. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And then LBJ. Tell the story because, yeah. yes, I, we know this. Or, yeah. Go. Uh, and then LBJ was just kind of like, I can't make. Uh, this is a free country. I can't make anybody do anything. But what I can do is I'm going to bury him, bury him in Arlen Cemetery. Yeah. Like, we're going to bury him with full military honors in one of the highest, um, most ceremonic ways mm-hmm. possible. And I was just always like, that is cool. Yeah. That was. He was like the first Mexican to have died in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. And then he was also. Um, I think the family, I want to say the family was from the Valley. Oh, really? I, I think. I could be wrong. It, the Valley or San Antonio, kind of the same thing, right? No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> two, um, yeah. two people from north of San Antonio. Yeah. Yes, actually. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but um, yeah, I, I want to I wanna say they were from the Valley. But yeah, at, it, at the time, obviously, it was like very kind of very different time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, in some cases, not so different. But, um, yeah, they were trying to get him buried in, like, the military or the veterans kind of cemetery. And at the time, it was, like, specific kind of veteran um, cemetery. And they didn't want to do it. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Well, on the note of spooky stuff, because uh, my industry for who would I'd like to see more of is I want to see more Hispanic movies, basically, more Latino movies, because the Sam says this, I've never fact-checked him, but I'm willing to believe it that it's like nobody watches more movies than uh, Mexican-Americans and Latinos. I don't know how I would fact-check that. Uh, John John has the answer. Well, uh, Vietnam, Paul Rodriguez in 1966. Yes, yes. Fuck, man. Um, I, I'm, I'm I'm upset. I don't remember his name, but yeah. I mean, we all didn't come with notes today. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, on the note of, of movies, it was just kind of like I feel like we we didn't get a lot, and then we got Cheech and Chong in the '80s, and then Rob Rodriguez pushed it like to tell Mexican American story. Like he was filmed in Del Rio. Like yeah. that was yeah. awesome, yeah. and. Then we got um, my dad and like all his siblings went to school with uh, Robert. Oh shit! Really? Yeah, he's UT? from the valley. Yeah. No, he's oh. from the valley. Yeah, oh, okay. Robert went to uh, a Calchetta. Yeah. Um, 
I and then yeah. we got Guillermo del Toro still, mm-hmm. but he's also kind of like winding down in the sense because he said he would. When he won that Oscar for under the underwater movie, Shape yeah. Of Water. yeah, he was, still have not seen it. I haven't seen it. I'm disappointed. Still haven't seen it. Um, and then, um, well, we got another one. True, the the guy that Birdman uh, did Birdman and Amores Perros and stuff like that. Inarito. Oh, yeah. shit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Pull it out, man. Holy shit. But uh, this is another movie. This is a movie that I saw. It was called Satanic Hispanics, and it had three um, short stories, each one directed by a different director. And then I'm just going to show the clips really quick because I was like, not all of them hit, but all of them were very cool to watch. Shot in the head. And only one survivor. Both call me be I or you can even possibly Whoa. comprehend. Whoa! If I don't leave here within the next 90 minutes, we are all going to be dead. This plays out like VHS. Like, it's three different stories. Also, the fact that that's Pedro? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Holy shit. That's wild. I'm fucking down for it. Like I said, it's three short stories. I thought that was going to be a clip because this is actually the one that was winning awards and stuff. They tell like an Aztec story of trying to sacri- or someone ends up being sacrificed kind mm-hmm. of thing. And it's very it's good. Some bits of it, like I said, they really hit. Some bits of it are kind of bad. My favorite one was actually like a little bit of a comedic thing where they just had this old Mexican grandpa who was a vampire, and the entire time he's just getting calls from his wife. He's like, you you fucked up. Like, you're about to die because it's daylight savings time, and he's just trying to run home. Jesus <laughs> Christ. That's fucking great. Let me see if I can find also, it. Also, go figure. It's a fucking grandpa mexicano, like a widow <laughs> vampire. You fucking pendejo. <laughs> the wife is Anux in a moon, I think, from The Mummy. I don't know. I don't. I don't know her actual like the actress's name, but in the mummy, she's Anuxinamun. She's uh, Emotep's main squeeze. <laughs> Interesting. I'm just seeing if I can find it real quick because I couldn't find it online. So maybe I can find a picture. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it. It's like I said. It's a really fun. Watch it's even if it's boring, like I said, it's a 15 minute kind of thing. I would high key recommend it, and I just feel like between Guillermo del Toro, like we we know we tell the best scary stories. Oh, bro, 100 percent, absolutely. No, not Rachel Vice. Rachel Vice was uh, Evie in the Mummy. I'm talking about Anax and Amun, the uh, <laughs> the, the pharaoh, bad one, <laughs> the Pharaoh's wife who emotes her side piece. <laughs> but yeah. um I would like to see more Hispanics in film. I mean, fuck. Uh, the fact that we got Namor for a little bit, that was cool. Bro, I want to see a co-directed movie with, like, um, oh, my God. What's his name? Coogler. And, yeah. like, I don't know, fucking maybe Iñárritu or somebody upcoming, like, you know, that has and gives a little bit m- more depth to namor not yeah. that he didn't have fucking depth because holy shit that whole story was like really fucking put together well that whole movie was a rewrite they were writing it on the fly kind of thing oh yeah absolutely i mean i think not to get too off the track but i think anybody who doesn't give black panther it's like absolute flowers and considers it in like the top three movies since fucking endgame is kind of crazy because like that whole like just knowing the backstory of like the complete rewrite the complete refilming like every fucking thing that went through that like that's that's absolutely fucking insane I, absolutely insane I mean, and it still fucking ended up like being an actually genuinely good solo fucking movie um depends on the charges being cleared um 
But on the note of the original story, I just wish we had seen the original story because it was the main uh, it was T'Challa f- trying to figure out how to be a dad while being a king at the same time. And I was like, damn, that's a pretty cool story that we're not. Yeah, that we're know. never going to get. <laughs> yeah, like, seriously. But, I mean, I think that's also the painfully beautiful part of, like, just kind of life. Yeah. You yeah. know? Stories that could have been, that should have been, but just are going to just never be told. I would say other than that, one of the things that I would like to see, and this is just personal, is just, and this is straight Texas, because I think California and New York obviously have it down with AOC and other stuff. But, uh, yeah, we don't have a strong Tejano, like, in politics. Like they call, we supposedly have the Cruz I don't know, call brothers. Those, the Castro brothers. Uh, the Castro yeah. brothers. Yeah. I, I said supposedly. Yeah. Also not a big fan of Casas, but Yeah. Of what? Casas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm with you guys, too, where it's just kind of like they don't – they just seem very, like, dry paint. Like they don't, ha- they don't really stand for anything it, one way or the other. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know much of what the Castle Brothers are doing anymore, if at all. Like, <laughs> that, I mean, they're fucking career politicians, right? So they're yeah. doing something, but I, I don't know. It's just I've been in the same room as them, and I'm just kind of, and I've talked to them, and they just, I've never seen somebody treat me like uh, they're in a commercial while I'm <laughs> talking to them. <laughs> Oh, hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Oh, oh, I, I love meeting my constituents. Hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, Didn't you buy a car recently? <laughs> you know what's funny when I bought a car? Like, I couldn't negotiate at all. Like, it was oh, during that I period. Couldn't... Yeah. It was during that period where... Oh, you, you... I, I'm just incompetent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It was straight up, like, there was a shortage on cars because I wanted a hybrid yeah. So I was like, oh, well, I'm only here for an hybrid. Because they tried to put me in a RAV4. I went to a Toyota dealer. <laughs> and I was like, no, this is the exact opposite. And I, I know they gave them notes that were like, know, well, but- if you buy a RAV4, it'll take three years for you to see a difference in your wallet. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> no, thank I you. I want that difference now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. Uh, Werewolf by Night technically counts because it was played and I think partially directed by uh, Gael Garcia Bernal who was the uh-huh. who was Werewolf by Night let's see who it was directed by Werewolf by Night director I'm just Uh-oh. sad that that doesn't fit anywhere kind of in the MCU is Michael Gaichano Gaichano from New Jersey so it Maybe. Italian, Puerto Rican, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. But uh, I, I, find, I, like, I think comic that... book artists. Yeah. And all the famous ones that I can think of, like New York, ah, Puerto Rican, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, still, still counts for the list, but I was yeah. like, I kind of want like a Mexican one. <laughs> well, yeah. that, was, that was the other thing that I thought was funny when we were like, oh, okay, we're doing Latinos this this podcast, and I was yeah. just kind of, I've always been gray on where things, where the line ends, or yeah, yeah. like, does Brazil count? I would uh, say, yeah. Considering how much I've worked with them, yes. Yeah, totally. <laughs> what about, uh, wh- is there a line in the islands? Because, like, Cuba and... Uh, uh, technically, no. So all the Caribbeans are Latino. That's uh, right. So, yeah, because, like, Haitians, that, yeah. they're they in all technicality, culturally, like, historically, and even kind of now, they consider themselves, at least some of the few that I've met, mm-hmm. um, they consider themselves, like, Latino. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's well, why I... I, yeah. I like embrace the term Latam or Latin America because yeah. it's like yeah. how else can you say an all encompassing like term and then everyone defaults South Americans well no Mexico is in North America so <laughs> I hate that. yeah also uh, Pedro Pascal is Chilean oh uh, yeah yeah yeah. Someone, yeah but we take we, we accept Chile <laughs> Chileans Chilean news, yeah. um, Sam when he was playing the Olympics he, he didn't want to be the United States so he made himself Chilean I was like okay bro whatever <laughs> cool yeah, alright but no I because I, I, I remember uh, it wasn't it was Dominican I was like I, I, I was talking to one of my friends that was Dominican I'm like where's the line because like I would think like Bermuda and Jamaica and not 
Hispanic or Latino at all. Technically, yeah. Yeah. Um, I Jamaicans, I think, are kind of like somewhat some of the outliers, just because like Jamaicans that I've met and t- spoken to, also, which is like two. Mm-hmm. Um, they one has called themselves like we're just Jamaican, but yeah. like we accept like Latino as like a term and then the other one's like nah we're just Jamaican and I'm just like hey, okay like you can say whatever you want like, <laughs> I ain't gonna I, fight you yeah I was like yeah I don't care I just wanna I, know I like, just saying you're invited exactly. to the carne asada bro <laughs> uh, well Haiti's not close to Dominican Republic it is on the same island as Dominican <laughs> Republic like, it's literally it a line that they, yeah. yeah it's an unfortunate very visual line um, you can tell which one is which well if you ever look up the Haitian revolution it was very dope Oh yeah, uh, just it is still fucked up, and it is why I wish like more Haitians were able to make it to uh, the Olympics and win uh, to be like a big fuck you to fucking France. Also, <laughs> fuck the French. Well, I agree that, <laughs> wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly, that is one thing that in there's sports- like one part of history where they're like. That's cool, and then that's it. Like that's it, and yeah, it's when they only... chopped off the monarch's head. But <laughs> I was gonna say when uh, World War Two happened. Oh yeah, that also cool. Because um, they were really cool to the black GIs. I was gonna say there's one period. Um, fuck, I lost my train of thought. Oh, I don't understand how like the French, the United States, and I'm basically everyone that was ever colonized anywhere, like they can, like they're. Colon, their former colonies count as like they can play for France, the United States, and stuff in the Olympics. Like I remember when France won the World Cup. No, France lost the World Cup. But when France got to the World Cup, it was like that dude's from the Ivory Coast. That dude's from, uh, and well, I was just kind of like, I don't know that. It's I think the kind of very similar way to where like. Puerto Rico doesn't show or send anybody out to the Olympics. Oh. You know? And, like, America, Samoa, like, they never send anybody out to the Olympics. You know? And they all kind of, like, fall under that, like... Fun fact about America and Samoa, um, 70% of them are in the military. That's <laughs> <laughs> so fucking depressing. Well, uh... I mean, I know that they, like, are all... They, 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 I, I genuinely love our veterans. Well, I have a fun question just on the sports note here real quick that I feel like you'll give a very entertaining answer to. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> how do you feel about all these colonized countries? Like, And then it's like they'll go into a UFC or a boxing match, and it's like I'm going to hold the Mexican flag, but they're, like, they've been in Denver their entire life kind of thing. I So, like, do they have a claim to actually – Say or walk out with the Mexican flag and stuff like that. Maybe I'm not exactly understand. So somebody who is like Mexican but f- practices, trains, and fights out of Colorado. No, no, no. They, their whole like Cain Velasquez does it. Uh-huh. He's he's from California, Got but he'll you. come out with the Mexican flag. Oh, okay. And then there's, I mean, I think Dana White even himself has been like. I support people. They can do whatever they want, but that dude's American. He's not mm-hmm. Mexican, like, at the end of the day kind of thing. Man, I think it's, like, I think it kind of falls to, like, who, whatever your kind of, like, culture and, com- like, the way you yeah. perceive yourself as ethnically and, like, yeah. also just culturally. Um, like, so the one who comes to mind, um, I forget his last name. I want to say Marquez Miles, mm-hmm. but he's Colombiano. Uh, born in, I believe, Bogota, but he trains and fights out of Mexico City. Yeah. And he does the two. He carries the Colombian flag and he carries the Mexican flag. And he's like, you know, and I, I don't, I, God, I hate that I can't remember like who, where these quotes come from, but there, uh, there's a famous quote that says, um, a Mexican isn't just like, born in Mexico. A Mexican is born like wherever you are, but it's whether or not you carry the heart of a Mexican. Mm-hmm. And so he says that. He's like like no soy mexicano like by birth, yeah. pero soy mexicano. And it's like he that's why he carries the flag. And it's like I'm like now tried and true proud Mexican. Um 
so I think it's kind of just like your personal kind of preference is like what you it's like um, also Merab um, yeah. who is like very Georgianian or whatever the fuck he is yeah but like he was 100% fully accepted by the Mexican like community and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was like oh, I fucking love Mexicans you know what I'm just <laughs> like yeah fuck yeah dude like yeah yeah you're Mexican you know it but it's it's I think to that extent it's kind of like what you personally and culturally feel it's a nationality you know it's yeah. not like you're saying like you're one uh, With you're this a flag race. i renounce my yeah it's, my and it's not like you know I, it's not like you're saying all of a sudden like you're fucking like you're claiming that you're an indigenous person it's like no 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 you're just like you're you're accepting of like a culture you appreciate a culture you're not a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um uh but you know it's i, I think it's like it's a very well put together way in of like showing your appreciation of a cu culture without being appropriatory or appro appropriating like yeah. without appropriating it you know um well i mean can it ever get appropriatory though yeah i think uh, it can i okay. think it can if you're like there, here's the thing it, i always my philosophy is there's like a hard line that is like the limit there's yeah. a limit to every fucking thing and that limit is going to be you know seen one way or another when it becomes mocking when it becomes like abusive when it becomes bastardized when it becomes perverse like that's when it's like all right what are we doing here like yeah, uh, yeah. there's yeah. there's a, a difference between like you know what I want to do this right. I love the culture. I love the way. I mean, in the fighting world, I love the way. Mexican, I mean, it's like what my man up says. Like, I love the heart of a Mexican fighter. I love the way Mexican fight. I love the, like, the whole philosophy and the like metaphysics of like the Mexican chin. Yeah. You know, like you don't Mexicans don't get knocked out, right? It's like you know that's the thing, and um, like that's being appreciative. That's like in kind of just engulfing the culture and saying like i'm want to be a part of this there's a very fine line where it can become bastardized it can become mm -hmm. like mocked it can become mockingly it can become again perverse and kind of just like all right dude like you're being a little too much um <laughs> but i mean you know it's for now it's all loving games and well, you know but i'm from mexico you know no, I just wanted your your train of thought on that. Yeah, but no. on the note, on this note, we're going to move on to the next topic, which was um, we're, Hispanic Heritage Month is coming up, um, which is kind of funny because it already crosses a border. It starts September fifteenth and goes to October fifteenth. <laughs> so, so weird. It's like they, <laughs> they, they they give black people the shortest month of the year, yeah. and then they just say like. You're all fucking Mexican, right? Like fucking <laughs> start September 16th, right? That's your fucking Independence Day. It's like, oh my god, we talking about fucking. Oh, I mean, there's also, I think Native American Heritage Month is on is, Thanksgiving. I think s October is Native American Heritage. No, Month. it's November. I think it's, it's November? like it's, it go oh. it's on the date of Thanksgiving, like when Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thanksgiving is like if you read the books, it's like oh we are thankful to kill these savages and have oh, yeah, peace 100%. today. I think that's what it is. Let me double check. But wait, but Thanksgiving is what the government just can move it. Like that was a big yeah. Thing it's like the every, it's the third November Thursday of yeah. It used no, to be okay. like the, so uh, just November is the okay great <laughs> great cool. It used to be what I think like the second Thursday of November, and then FDR was like, "All right, um, fuck it, it's gonna be on the third to like help the economy for whatever like backwards black magic economical math his cabinet was telling him." <laughs> and people were pissed about it. People were like, "Ah, you never know. Tomorrow might be Christmas." And then the prophecy okay. fulfilled itself because cool. Christmas decorations are up in October and shit. So. <laughs> It is one syllable. 
Um, nice. But yeah, I mean, I do think it is funny the amount of places that don't really celebrate El Grito, which is, it's the thing. Yeah. It, it is actually the important holiday. Uh, that being said, when I was in Chicago, they fucking love, they go crazy. Bro, Chicago <laughs> is a mishmash. It is wild. That place is like every fucking almost like Latino culture all slammed into one spot and it's crazy they have like puerto rican uh parade they have the dominican parade they have mexican independence day they have like a whole colombiano kind of like time uh, yeah they're fucking insane yeah dude I, it is it, cool though cool to see <laughs> oh! <laughs> Chicago streets get terrorized. That's, a fucking, that's the highlight, bro. Holy shit, that's so good. Uh, yeah, bro. Well, I mean, John's from the border. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, Mexico um, in Eagle Pass was pretty dope. We'd go to Piedras and celebrate yeah. it there. But yeah, dude, the one place that I've seen party like that was Chicago. That they were all about. About it. <laughs> Wild. Wild. Uh, Miami, I, I've been there. I loved Miami. I don't know enough about the local culture or about Dominicans or anything like that to know what they celebrate. I do know because they have a huge Cuban policy, uh, huge Cuban population. When Castro died, they had a party throughout that entire street. Bro, and it looked like a Trump rally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because guess what? A certain type of Cuban was purged from fucking. Oh, speaking of purge. Uh, Jesus. Was, uh, yeah, they were fucking pushed out of fucking Cuba, you know? Like, yeah. It, in Mexican culture, man, fucking Castro's a hero. In, uh, at least in Mexico, like Gus was a fucking hero. My, uh, well, it, well, it is funny. Them while storming the the beach or whatever, uh, when they started the Cuban Revolution, was yeah. out of Mexico. Yeah, yeah. It, they went to Mexico to learn from the Zapatistas and the fucking descendants of like Pancho Villa and everything. And yeah. then they just were like, "All right, cool." Met Che Guevara, and we're like, "Hey, you want to do this? Let's fucking yeah. do this." And then they fucking went back, like. North to south, fucking just washed all the way through, and they were like, "All you motherfuckers can get the fuck out," because uh, all those people were just like old Italian mobsters that the U.S. government captured after they got Capone and shut the whole shit down from bootlegging, yeah. and said you can either go to jail or you can go to this little island and uh, <laughs> become dictators and run the whole bitch and just give us all your supplies. Um, and yeah, then, it was and like a uh, propped up happened. banana republic, I believe, by uh, Batista, yeah. the the dictator. Mm -hmm. Yep. I do know about Cuban history. I just don't know much I, after the eighties, probably. Outside of like, they tried to kill Castro like twenty times, and bro, he... well, this <laughs> is why fucking Hank Hill is a fucking dead. G, bro. Because <laughs> Castro, first off, also anybody who believes that there was fucking nuclear missiles in fucking uh, Cuba yeah. from Russia is. Ignant because uh, fucking Castro hated the Russians. Castro hated every fucking white Euro like centered like country. It, there's no way he was gonna piece himself up with them. But while the fucking FBI and CIA were trying to fucking assassinate this motherfucker, he smuggled himself out of the little island country mm -hmm. into South Africa and assassinated high. Um, <laughs> high-ranking military members yeah. in South Africa while secretly smuggling himself into the prison to meet and talk to Mandela face-to-face -face and then smuggle himself all the way across the ocean back into the island. So, Gosler was a fucking G. Gosler was a fucking hero of some peoples, and uh, you couldn't kill the I, motherfucker, man. I believe, and I may be wrong, but he had some sort of surgery. I forgot whether it was uh, his appendix or heart surgery or something. But he did it without anesthesia because he just oh, didn't, yeah. he he, didn't well, trust. He didn't trust. Yeah, yeah, he didn't trust nobody. Yeah. <laughs> I, it might have been the appendix. Yeah. It might have been the appendix. Yeah. That that was one of my favorite uh, stories that I heard. I, I think at this point, just because, like, if you go back to – because I'm, I'm a big Roman history now. You look at those people, and I'm like, they're, they're, they're all pretty bad and had slaves and do all this other stuff. So it's just like at a certain point, you just got to look at people as characters, good or bad, like they – 
they did what they did and now they're gone kind yeah. of thing yeah i mean that's what all history is just a whole bunch of fucking dorks and dumbasses <laughs> well i mean what other latino ho- holidays would you like to talk about holidays or like i believe that's the way you worded it it was just like how ho- Latino holidays and how we should celebrate them. And- oh, yeah. It's like things moving forward. And, um, yeah, uh, holidays or how we want to um, honor, like, our culture. I mean, man, I really want to get to a point to where um, we can do a whole – I mean, I'm born and raised in East Austin, fourth generation. And I really want to get to a place to where we can get a whole bunch of, like, not just the OGs, but, like, folks who are here now. And do almost like a citywide fucking Dia de los Muertos. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, I think there's something, I mean, folks all across the state, especially obviously in Texas, um, they like, they do it. And um, I think we really got to fucking do something like that, man. It's just, we've got too much history in this state, in the community, in the culture, and we're doing fucking still good work. You know, it'd be a really cool thing to do, like, uh, Dia de los Muertos Parade. Um, and, in all honesty, like, bring in the black community, too, man. Because, like, the black community knows how to do it. They've been doing... Night Badgie. Um, they've been doing um, Juneteenth Great parades. Support. You know, yeah. uh, MLK parades. I mean, again, born and raised well, in here. I grew up seeing the Juneteenth and, um, and MLK parades in Austin. Uh, yeah, kind of like a fiesta. Um, MJ and San Antonio, that'd be fucking dope if we if that's something that we could do. But I also want to like look at this as like not something that we can bastardize down the road. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Again, we talk about like when is it appreciating and then when is it appropriating. Um, well, I, I mean, was it uh, emancipation uh, it, Juneteenth? Oh that, man, yeah, that well, really oh, fast. That got fucking appropriated, <laughs> stupid fast. So, podcast that I mentioned earlier, uh, yeah. not that serious podcast, uh, not that ser- serious podcast. They talk about um, they had a episode a few weeks ago where um, they had some people who were on there, some women who were on there that were like very educated about like the Juneteenth kind of mm-hmm. community uh, culture, and they were like, they again, all black women, all black men. Uh, they all kind of said, like, this is not a national black holiday. No, this is a black Texan holiday. Yeah, this yeah. is not something that we should be, like, nationally perversing and bastardizing and saying, like, oh, fucking Juneteenth, like, you know, celebration or whatever the fuck. Like, nobody outside of Texas actually knows what the fuck happened to Juneteenth unless you are genuinely, like, looking for that have connections to that ancestrally or have like a history kind of understanding of it. But, you know, there's things that are particular to different states and have like every state's different. And it's kind of like what some of these fucking British influencers are learning now. Every state is pretty much its own fucking country. Like they all their own like community and culture uh, and history. Uh, Side tangent. But I love seeing those TikToks of like travel agents where they're like booking someone to like, come to disney world from europe and they're like all right so so what are your plans like how how long do you intend to stay in florida or like are you planning to go to miami like no we plan to see disneyland then see statue of liberty and they're like, oh, God. you're only here Jesus. for the weekend boo boo you right. can't do that <laughs> And that is a <laughs> slick maybe, 12 hours ride. <laughs> maybe Epcot has a Disney has a Statue of Liberty. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I immediately went Russian. <laughs> well, I, I did see two British dudes that, like... <laughs> That's um, true, you did. You just went fucking super far Eastern European with it. Um, I saw two British dudes that, that TikTok just kept fetting me their shit. And all they, they, they were kind of from Dallas to El Paso... And they probably did it pretty close to right. They were just kind of like, we're here to uh, eat tacos and enjoy the culture here in Texas. Is that the one that they went to uh, Mi Tierra in San Antonio? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah they eating the fucking side tacos. And then, <laughs> yeah. And then, um, what's his name? Uh, este, uh, Chancla Academy. He called him out. He was like, anybody who fucking recommended Mi Tierra? 
She fucking did like <laughs> de own San Antonio. How was the fact that you sent them there? And not like one of the local spots or whatever the fuck. Because I mean, I, I know Mi Tierra is definitely not like the local spot anymore. Nah. It's like, it's kind of like their version of South by. It just all got pimped out. I think I ate there only because it was the only place open. Like it's in the probably, area. yeah, <laughs> probably is true. They're the open early and we're heading to San Antonio. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. To try something. Currently, we are in New Braunfels and we're about to try a breakfast taco. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Braunfels? What the fuck? That's where you get your fucking taco? Oh my god. We went Jesus here because fuck. it sounded German and we've been to Germany. So. <laughs> <laughs> listen with the fucking accents, bro. Holy shit. I well, listen. <laughs> fair, I will say on, on the, on the note good. of um, having something for Dia de los Muertos or anything, anything really, I, it just would be nice for us to organize. I think the the yeah. closest thing is uh, we had Mexican American Con, and Sam was actually invited to be a speaker to that. But I mean, that was on November second, so it was about something like that. What the fuck? Yeah, you didn't hear about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah, know this that's... motherfucking shit was going on. What the fuck? That it... was something that I wanted to say. Where it's like, I don't, I don't necessarily want something as big as Fiesta. Also, good night, Serenity. To be completely fair, never been to Fiesta, so I don't. Uh, me neither. <laughs> but I you didn't. You didn't go to the taco competition. That yeah. was part of Fiesta. No, I didn't. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, where no. like fucking torchy always wins. No, 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 no that was in medals? Austin. <laughs> okay, no, I was talking about the one in San Antonio. Oh gotcha. no, yeah, no, I, gotcha. I didn't end up going. I... Whoever the fuck <laughs> voted for torchies, you're not a Texan. Go back. Wherever the <laughs> fuck you came from, still Nebraska, <laughs> wherever the fuck it was, go back. How do they always meddle? Like it. <laughs> Bro, I don't know because I did, I know a distillery that always meddles at Texas Whiskey Festival. I'm like, you're fucking meddling. <laughs> I don't throw shade at Texas uh, distilleries, but holy shit. No, but uh, recently on my Facebook feed because I'm a massive weeb, it was like, oh hey, we're having uh, Austin is having a a, a Japanese America festival with the, our Japanese sister city. Uh, I forgot the name of it, but it's not like Tokyo or nothing. Apparently There's we a have Japanese a... sister city. Evidently so. Uh, it, it starts with an O. It's like Osaka. Okinawa. No, damn it. Okira. It's a very short one. Like it's two syllables. It'd be like two <laughs> two symbols probably if you wrote. What's it up out. with Texas? Oida. Oida. Texas um, and sister cities, man. Since 1990. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> right, but I got a fa I got a targeted Facebook ad for that for like our that cultural festival that's going down interesting like three months from now i think it's in november but i i've yet to get a targeted facebook ad telling me like hey yeah we're having mex america con <laughs> or that's wild yeah no man we, we need to get better on that marketing game how do we not have a sister city with mexico like we do I, I, saltillo oh Get Sweet. the fuck out. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked that up right now. I also, didn't... Saltillo? <laughs> That's insane because I chose just out of random to support the Sal Saltillo Dinos. <laughs> <laughs> the LFA um, team, yeah. which is the... La La uh, Los Gallos Negros. Like, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, man. That's wild. That's crazy. Yeah, Los Dinos del Satillo. Yeah. Yeah, man. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, we got one in Australia. Adelaide. Yeah. Anger. Ah, uh, man, I really wish we got Manly, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Ma Manly we is a town We got a London in borough of Hackney. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what it's We don't said. even get all of London? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> We're big oh. enough now. I think we should deserve. Hey, bro, we got <laughs> we the we got the capital of Peru, Lima. Oh, sweet, Woo, yeah. interesting. Ooh. We'll Holy take shit. Lima. This yeah. is the first country. I don't know where it is. Lesotho. Les yeah, uh, I can't even see how it's spelled. What? Les you got me. Oh, uh, uh. look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and look it up. Lesotho, South Africa. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Damn, that place is fucking beautiful. Yo! <laughs> no, look at look, look well, at check out the waterfall. Yeah. <laughs> that's nice. Definitely, 
that's, would like to vacation. That's Lord of the Rings right there. Well, Lord of the Rings is in uh, <laughs> New Zealand. Well, that's even so, New Zealand has a sip. To- <laughs> so I found out uh, recently, side, side tangent, Yeah. real quick. Um, but I've been watching a lot of uh, Lindsay Ellis's videos because I like her film analysis. And uh, she did one on The Hobbit. Yeah. And evidently there was a labor dispute while they were like trying to get the Hobbit off the ground or, or start filming, start production on the Hobbit because uh, studios, when they want to film something on the cheap, they're like, well, let's shoot it in New Zealand. It's beautiful. And we don't have to pay the actor's scale. We don't have to pay the actors, you know, uh, uh, union prices. Mm-hmm. So that's why uh, they, made the production in New Zealand for the Lord of the Rings when I didn't Hobbit know that. was getting off the ground. New Zealand actors were like, hey, uh, like we want to get the same benefits that American actors get, the same fare, or like even British actors. There's a lot of British people in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and they also get, you know, union benefits. Like, we want some of them too. So uh, that was probably closer to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> But they were part of the union dispute as well. So while negotiations were on the way, there was a real solid chance that The Hobbit was not going to be filmed in New Zealand. Oh, shit. Interesting. Well, it's also like um, during the writer's strike how people were like throwing a fit and trying to like blacklist the uh, directors and writers for um, the the dragon show the yeah, game, game of, of thrones. thrones yeah the game of thrones house of, dragons. house of dragons but everybody was like no no no, no. don't boycott them because mm-hmm. they're doing everything in england and or uk or whatever the fuck like yeah. in europe so they have very different roles and they're like okay like <laughs> those, <laughs> those people can afford like to live but don't blacklist and don't like boycott them. They're totally fine, even though there's American actors or U.S. actors like in the show. It's because they're being employed currently by uh, UK or whatever the fuck. Kind of like uh, they have unions company. there, and yeah, yeah exactly. And more. they, for the most part, I are. I, I worked for a British company for a little bit, and they get like two or three oh, days off oh, randomly shit. all them every month. Well, it's like uh, the uh, I don't I don't know what she did i think she was maybe in track but the um the american olympian she placed gold i think in whatever the fuck she did but while she was over there she had a pap smear she got new glasses she had a fucking (laughs) she did though in like the span of the works yeah in the span of two days she did like all of the next like two or three year like kind of like checkups that she was gonna have to do just because, like, it was like all the NHS free. was, yeah, yeah, they were just free. like, yeah, come on. Yeah. They complain come about that, the, the British people do, but whatever, fuck them. First of all, just random side tangent as I was looking at these British people, Brits hunt for the best taco in America and they go to Texas already on the win. Didn't right. go to... <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, on Sam. the right track. Yeah. Yeah. Second of uh, second of all, they, this is them in El Paso. When you see seats like this, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're in the right spot. You're on at least like on track. You know? uh, the Just... comments are pretty funny. Oh man, wish I, I'd known you were here. Could have got uh, showed you some beers. Find a round them taco truck and get those. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. El Paso, kind of underrated. I don't want to go there, but kind of underrated. I the people want there... to go there because that's probably the next main biggest like city that i've not gone to oh really yeah never been i just got back from dallas for my birthday it was the first time i've gone and really like enjoyed myself really you like in downtown dallas and done like both of y'all went oh that's right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, that's right did y'all do any distilleries we didn't get a chance to we did we only went to one brewery and it was four corners but um four corners everything was like Interesting. You don't well, like Four Corners? Well, I just isn't Four Corners like a Colorado thing? Oh, no. or is it Four Corners for like a different Dallas reason? I don't know why it is called. I don't, four... Yeah, I just okay. drank their beers. I don't know why they're. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, no. unless it's on I the mean, can. I, don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say like they they're very. Oh, God, yeah. uh, Fuck uh, yes, yeah. dude. Yeah, good man. Yeah. Look at you. Yeah, I was. Four cor- oh. I know Four Corners. I don't know why I didn't fucking 
Because you were thinking about the Four Corners. Yes, <laughs> and I also, yeah, I didn't know that was called Four Corners. I just know it as, like, the fucking rooster beer. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I've never, yeah, I've, yeah, the chingon, yeah. Ironically called El Grito. Eh. There you go, yeah. Eh. But, yeah, no, um, my friend does the art for it, and I was like, oh, well, that seems like a good place to start. And then we had a great time. So uh, it was funny because... TJ is basically from Dallas, and he was like, haven't done any of these things. Haven't gone to the video game museum. Haven't gone to this place that has fucking huge ass cake shakes. And um, what else was it? Uh, the the Sam- Samurai Museum. Yeah. What? Yeah. Evidently, Texas has the large, the second largest collection. <laughs> <laughs> the only place that what has the one fuck larger is this British <laughs> Britain Museum. The only place that has a larger collection of samurai armor is Japan. <laughs> okay, I took a lot of pictures too. Yeah, interesting. The only thing they told us to do was don't touch the horse. I mean, don't touch the armor. Kind of goes with don't t- it. Don't touch. <laughs> but like, yeah, the, they were like, people keep trying to or touch the horse. Cut your hand off with a fucking. <laughs> like, Take your pinkies. Well, on the, the last topic for the day, in honor of it being almost uh, Latino Heritage Month, and I have, I didn't even really do research. I have so many to shoot for that I'm like, I can do anything, and it's just a matter of fact that. Latinos don't support each other the way that African Americans do, where it's just kind of like, here is a notebook full of people that literally helped change America. And Latinos did it too. And then it's just kind of like, it's like Snapple facts. You got to fucking dig for it. Like, we are not organized like that. This is a bad example, but I keep thinking back to The Simpsons when... He's like, I'm the ghost of Cesar Chavez. (laughs) Why do you look like Cesar Romero? Because you don't know what Cesar Chavez looks like. (laughs) (laughs) No, I mean, you know, I I, I think it's also... I think a lot of it also is because, like, unfortunately, like, Africa, South America, and, like, Central America, like, were really fucking just stripped away by, like, different fucking colonial pieces. Yeah. You know, that and School of the Americas, we don't need to get political at all, but like School of the Americas was like a very real thing that happened, still is happening, and is why we got a lot of dictators in South America, Central America, because just fucking CIA motherfuckers go out there and start little coups and do the whole fucking thing and drop a couple hey, this hundred. This cocaine shit's pretty good. You yeah, exactly. Sell it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, it's. Uh, not conspiracy. It's like, no, yeah, it's, it's the school of America. It's literally in narcos, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's like it was. It was in Blue Beetle, and it was funny because I was like, they, they show wow. the school of. I still haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, just for the sake of the culture, but still have not seen it. It's, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good, but it's also really funny that it's it's a throwaway scene. Like that shows wow. School of Americas. They show a guy training, but they never explain it. They never were like yeah. he was trained in the School of Americas or say what the School of Americas are. And I was just kind of like, I'm glad I'm a nerd because that would have gone way over my head. <laughs> wow, that's yeah. insane. But I did want to pull up a list real quick of this is what the chat had to say for their favorite heroes. Let me see if there's any new ones that haven't been posted. Damn, there's a lot. Okay. All right, I'm going to start with the ones that have been posted. Real Guillermo quick. del Toro. Um, MJ says, you just hang out in Deep Ellum. RIP Deep Ellum to Silly. And Brewery. Just shut down uh, earlier this oh, year. Yeah. Yeah. Deep Ellum yeah. Brewery and Distillery. RIP. Uh, Guillermo del Toro, we've talked about him. Mm. Um, this one, actually, you know what? I think I can do it this way. I can do it this way. Cool. Because now I see everybody's name. Some of the pictures didn't load. Um, Nayib Bukele, the president of El Salvador. Juan Escutia. And I actually just learned about this kid this year. Please do tell. I, I'm, I'm not so familiar than the, the when, name. Uh, during Polk's trigger. war, where Polk... Um, was like, hey, manifest destiny. We're going to uh-huh. attack Mexico. The whole, um, and it was funny. I learned it from Louis C.K., of all people. 
He just did a well, podcast. He's yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's like he had he's, so many Mexican facts. Yeah, he's chubby fucking Canelo, bro. Yeah, like, yeah he is. He's like he's Irish Mexican. But he was also the worst thing he did was nothing to fucking plan. And I'm sorry, like I, I like <laughs> we gotta get we gotta. Get. <laughs> Everybody was consenting. It, he's just fucking weird. Like, um, I'm sorry. No, no, you're no, fine. No, 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 you guys. <laughs> it, it's just kind of one of those I was things just where I forgot. To remember I, the routine where he's like. It, it really sucks when people know what you Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, it's like everybody has, the, everybody has their thing. It just sucks when everybody knows your thing. Like, <laughs> but, um, so Louis C.K., like, he was doing a history podcast, so he would drop random things. Like, I didn't know that when, uh, not JFK, but when, I think it was Bobby Kennedy when he died. Um, he was in a restaurant, and he was, like, uh, asking the dishwasher, like, Hey, do you have a rosary? Like, and he was because he was Mexican, and he was like, "Yeah, I, I got it." And then so he sat next to him and he read him his last rites because he gave him a rosary and prayed for him. And I was like, "That's such a random story that I've never heard of before." What the fuck? Wait, because Bobby Kennedy is Irish, so he's Catholic. So he's Catholic. So yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> he was there. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, fair. Um, wait, so read him his last rites, I, like his. But, well, no, I, I'm aware of what it yeah. is, but like, he died when though? After that, it was uh, after he got shot. I'm assuming. Or yeah, <laughs> I the both the Kennedy like that's what they talk about them being. Cool. Oh, so he had wait? Did he get shot in the fucking restaurant? No, no, no. Uh, but I don't think did he did Bobby die like immediately? Let me see. It was L.A. LA assassination of Robert F. Kennedy was shot by Sirhan Sirhan. There's the Mexican dude right there. Oh, shit. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Damn. Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Holy shit. Not even, like, loss of words. Wow. That was... That's insane. That's, I mean, some shit's just fucking cross cultural, man. That's crazy. Um, I am a recovering Catholic, but that is so fucking very, like, beautiful. I thought it was cool. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely, hundred yeah, yeah. percent. And so the name of the, is that the name of the gentleman then, the Mexicano? Uh, the, no, Sirhan shot him. The guy. Well, that, no, I know, not Sirhan. Yeah, no. <laughs> Wanderer fucking metal. question your fucking Mexicanismo <laughs> like if your name's Sir Han Sir Han but uh, Juan Romero Juan, yeah. Juan Romero wow wow but um so Juan es Escu Escutia I had not I didn't hear the names but in Poke, Poke's War went all the way to Mexico City and they started laying bombardment on the capital and at that point I mean Within the 50 years, you have the war for Texas independence, the war against Spain, mm -hmm. the war against France. Like, they were down to so many, so few people that it was children. It was children manning oh, the artillery. Oh, shit. Was yeah. he the last of uh, the Nino Cerros? Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. So, no, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I That's... So that's who he was. Yeah. He's oh, one of the chi uh, children that uh, jumped off. Fuck. Yeah. yeah, like they had, they were like, "There's no, we're not gonna win." So they the had, last they had retreated. Already. Yeah, like the main wow. uh, forces, the main yeah, army, battalion, yeah. yeah, had already retreated, and six kids stayed behind and fought to the death. Jesus and... Christ! Yeah, they wrapped themselves in the the Mexican flag, yes, and then jumped from the top. Yeah, so and that's why they have like six pillars in Mexico. Yeah, so the flag wouldn't get captured by the enemy. That's dope as fuck. That's what hard as fuck. fuck dude. <laughs> Holy shit. That was wow. actually Sam's cousin. That that was his name drop for his favorite Latino hero. Wow. Wow. That's in the dark. in the thumbnail that I made for today. Yeah, they they were there. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Holy shit. That's fucking yeah, that's fucking dope. Yeah. Wow. Um El Santo and Blue Demon. Um, luchadors yeah. made the wrestling mask famous. We got into that. We have an episode. Check it out. Movie stars. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, another guy said Eddie Guerrero. 
Yeah, man. I, I don't know if I've ever said it on the podcast, but uh, my high school wrestling coach went to um, the sa- or went to school with Eddie Guerrero uh, at New Mexican Highlands University. Eddie Guerrero won national championship in his weight class as wrestling and dropped out of school the very next day and was like, fuck this, I'm going to go fucking wrestle. And, <laughs> like, and like, went professionally. And so, I had yeah. never heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, kind of a controversial pick just because I thought this was funny. Uh, when I when I when the news broke, I wanted to have a topic about it on air, but Sam was like, no. Because um, we have several people hey, that said like- Zorro. Oh, yeah. So Zorro, I'd always thought. Well, first of all, fictional character uh-huh. takes a lot yeah, sure. of um, takes in a lot of different people, actual people, to kind of make it. Sure, I also would, to an extent, say that then in that case you couldn't consider like a professional wrestler as like a hero because they're technically well, kind of fictional well, character. He wasn't you know? saying like, that was doesn't count. Saying, That's not why I was saying Zoro doesn't count. Oh, okay. He was just saying that it's a blend of... Yeah, like mm-hmm. people who write them and yeah. people who, yeah, talk about... Well, what's the fucking... Well, so... What's the hoopla? Let me see if I can find it real quick. So I had always heard as a... From a child to forever that Zoro is based on Joaquin Morieta. Mm-hmm. Uh, and bandit out of California that was stealing shit. Well, now the story is coming out. Oh no, <laughs> that Zorro is Irish, and based on an Irishman named William Limport. We fuck with the Irish. Yeah, yeah, we'll take them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll take them. Uh, so Interesting. Wait, hold on. So who who's the, he was a pirate? Did you say? No, he's no, not a pirate. Okay, no. He was Irish. So. The story behind William Lamport is he was in Ireland. Ireland was being fucked over by the Protestants at that mm-hmm. point. So he went to Spain because Spain was taking in. Uh, they were still Catholic, so they were taking in all the Catholics and being like, yeah, you can come here. We'll give you a job. The job that they gave this dude was go to Mexico and help set up the government there. So he goes and he sees the way that the Spanish are treating the slaves, the way the Spanish are treating the native population, and he drafts a letter of revolution before the French Revolution, before the American Revolution, and tries to get a band together to fight for independence. They didn't win. I, th- the, the, I mean, yeah, no, obviously they didn't win, but I, I, think, I, I think we can take him, man. We can, him. It, we can claim him as much as we can claim the fucking Serbian-born... Like Prince or whatever the fuck who came over in a carriage and like was one of the first post Spanish like governors of Mexico or whatever the fuck it is um, because it's Mexican history. So like we have his original carriage like in uh, the Mexican history museum or whatnot. Uh, yeah, we'll take him. Mexican. <laughs> yeah. It's like you said, or it's like we said, like. It's about. It's not about where you're born. It's about, you know, yeah. the Mexicanismo in your heart. Yeah, man. <laughs> fucking about it. Uh, That's fucking so, wild. So he went to trial for sedition by the Spanish Inquisition in 1659 and was sentenced to death at the scape, but escaped the fate by talking to his own village, uh, by taking his own life via hanging. Sorry, I read that wrong. We got hyped and then not dehyped uh, really fast. <laughs> nah, I mean, yeah. well, you donned but... a mask and dungeons <laughs> and rapiered the fuck out of these soft uh, Spaniards. I mean, in the end, uh, it, uh, the hanging himself might have also been something that he learned from the indigenous. Because after a while, like, a lot of the indigenous were just like, if we can't fucking win this shit, like, it's better to take our own life than fucking loot. So, yeah. Well, uh, next we have Selena. Uh, just kind of uh, everything for Selena. <laughs> well, the way that I w- the way that this person worded it is, uh, Selena was always inspired me because she was so kind in all her interactions with the crowd. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Uh, next we got Petra Herrera, who I don't know anything about, but she's a Mexican revolutionary. Isn't she's one of the oh my god what do they call them the not the well they were all guerreras but oh my god remembering just... the Petra the unsung cross dressing heroine of the Mexican Revolution yes she uh 
Because it was... I think it was her. It, well, no, I, I don't think she was the only one. But there was somebody who was a woman who dressed and looked male features and cross-dressed to be a man. And they... I, I don't... It might have been her. But there was somebody who was, like, such a profound warrior that was by birth a woman um but they were such a profound warrior that they climbed through the mexican revolutionary ranks that they ended up being like zapata's like right hand or like one of their right hands one of his oh, this right one hands. this this uh woman fought with pancho villa so different i think but uh i do i don't know a lot about emiliano zapata and who is commandant sport and stuff like that but I do know a lot about the Zapatistas later on, where it's just mm-hmm. like, yeah, we since we're indigenous, we actually have a, a ton of female leaders and stuff. Yeah, there. I mean, the for a while the uh, the big story was that the Zapatistas were fighting out the existing at the time, like actual narcos who were yeah. trying to like encroach on their land and like uh, at the same time loggers and whatnot who were trying to, you know go off the backs of people who had money um and yeah they just like said fuck this and took arms and you know in good old mexican fashion baby <laughs> fought that shit out next we got danny trojo from street thug to entrepreneur and actor like that i am always impressed by people that manage to succeed at two or three different fucking oh yeah man. different avenues yeah, absolutely He's got his own taco shop out in out in L.A., I think. And then he does a lot for, like, I think he's got his own gym. He's got I, maybe his own studio. His own I think he has his own beer, too. He does he have might. his own beer. Yeah, he wouldn't be surprised. Um, the next one is a Dodgers player, Fernando Valenzuela. I don't know anything about the Dodgers. I do not know baseball. Except for the Cubano who... Uh, went to Mexico because he wasn't being paid enough in Cuba. And so he went to Mexico because from, if I'm not mistaken, his words were that uh, we are sister countries and, you know, I feel like I can come over here and still represent my culture. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was the guy who was, yeah. Uh, And the last entry we have is Ellen Ochoa. Uh, This dude dropped six people. Cheech. Benito Juarez, Pancho Villa, Emiliano, Saspi- uh, Emiliano Sas- Zapata, and Chesperito were his, yeah. his whole list. Chespirito. Wow, holy shit, yeah. I like the Chesperito pick. <laughs> yeah, I pick wanted pick. to, you know, be a jokester yeah. and uh, put a uh, Chapulín Colorado. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man. Fucking de- also comes out in Blue Beetle. Yes. Get the fuck out of here. What? Yeah, there's Whoa. a there's a little like stop motion animation that like a security guard is watching instead of doing his job. Oh, <laughs> that's so good. Well, it's because like uh I think DC had the quote unquote comic rights for uh El Chapulín. And so when uh the actor passed away, there was like for a few comic issues in a row from across like just lines of it um they had like all of the dc heroes like lined up and on the casket it was like the chapulin mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, well guys uh, who would you like to talk about uh <laughs> felipe <Yeah. Spencer. laughs> oh cool the, i forgot that um so i was kind of alluded to or hinted earlier um but john romero oh really yeah uh, I just wanted to pick someone different because I've already talked about uh, Cantinflas. I've talked about El Santo. <laughs> but let's let me switch it up a, li- a little bit, and it also ties into the industry that I wanted to see more, you know, people of color be figureheads in. This is the one guy that like he was the figurehead of Doom. He was the figurehead of Wolfenstein. He co-founded id Software co-founded uh ion storm or maybe he was the sole founder of ion storm I, i'm don't quote me i'm just gonna say co-founder to be on the safe side mm-hmm. uh ion storm is unfortunately like kind of where his downfall quote unquote downfall starts because he was 
banking on his next game to be a huge, huge, huge success. That game was unfortunately Dai Katana. For those uh, that don't remember, Dai Katana is just kind of mid. It was a PC game that came out in the 90s, but it's most famously remembered for a very bad magazine ad that he (laughs) has admitted. He's like, I didn't know what the fuck they were going to do. We hired like a top tier marketing firm Mm -hmm. and they're like, well, this needs a whole lot of 90s edge while they took like three drags of cigarettes. (laughs) 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 So the ad is just like a brown page because it was supposed to be like a Japanese sort of themed game. Um, And it just says, like, in bold black letters, John Romero is about to make you his bitch. (laughs) That was the ad. And then Dai Katana comes out, and everyone's like, I mean, it's all right. (laughs) (laughs) It's all right. Oh, God. Uh, You know, critics slammed it because it was delayed for so long, and then, like, when it finally comes out, it's just kind of mid uh but what a lot of people kind of for- Jesus Christ yeah that was it <laughs> uh what a lot of people kind of forget is that Ion Storm also made a little game like the B team I don't think John Romero was 100% involved in this one if at all but they made another little game called Deus Ex and that oh, was wow. that Whoa. was the last game that Holy I shit. think they published yeah, but Deus Ex was from John Romero's studio. Wow. Unfortunately, it didn't save the studio and they had to shut down. But he was fine. He went on and founded another fucking game studio. I think it was called Gazillion Games or something like that. Interesting. But yeah, he's still around. He still does uh, podcasts and like, uh, you know, appearances and talks and stuff. And it's just really dope to see, you know, someone that was kind of self-taught to code published his first game when he was 20 got started like jumped around in the tech industry a lot but founded three different companies and he's mexicano and indigenous like his mom is white so but like his his grandparents were i think cherokee and his dad was mexican like first generation mexican oh shit (laughs) Fuck yeah, man. Don't Which is know. why I want another one. I mean, another, <laughs> John Romero, God damn it. I'm still playing Doom today. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Well, what is, who's your hero? That you- man, I, uh, like, I talk about him a lot when I talk um, about, like, the fusion of Afro and indigenous and Mexican culture. Uh, but Vicente Guerrero, man, the first Afro-Indigenous president of Mexico, um, and if I'm not mistaken, of the entire like American s- countries. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So he it, was. Yeah. So he was, if I'm not mistaken, tri or quadlingual, or I guess polyling- poly uh, polyglot is what they say. But he knew English. Knew Spanish, knew Nahuatl, and then he knew his ancestral African language because his mother was, if I'm not mistaken, a slave. Um, but during his presidency, he abolished slavery. And he was the one who essentially kind of started a lot of that trickle down for what ended up being the Civil War for the U.S. because of his philosophies and beliefs that, like, no, every human is actually um, equal, you know. And so he also began that whole silent southern underground railroad that was the Mexican border, Mexican-Texas American border, however you want to say it. Um, but it was because of his philosophies that, you know, we later on down the road got into mexican american civil war the texas mexican you know civil war and um battle of the alamo whatever you know but vicente guerrero is a huge piece of history that i know for a fact gets completely washed over by 
both Mexican and 100% American uh, U.S. Uh, storytellers, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, we know Benito Juarez being the first indigenous, like, president of Mexico, but in reality, the first indigenous one is Vicente Fer- Guerrero. Um, I keep saying Fernandez, but, uh, but yeah, uh, but Vicente Guerrero, you know, Vicente Guerrero, he just happened to be half black and half indigenous, but he was the first. Um, if we're just talking about like where you're coming from, he was the first. And um, important piece of, uh, like I said, Mexican history and grand scheme of things, Northern American history, because it's all, you know, from what he started, trickle down. Everything start like just kind of started. Yeah, this is one of the branches that should be extended to us and um, African Americans as well. Oh yeah. I mean, there's again. We, I've, I think I've said it on this podcast multiple times, but I've said it definitely multiple times in discussion and education uh, with other folks and former students. But you know, there's populations along the border in Mexico that are, you know, 100 percent Afro descent and African yeah. descent because they just fled south instead of north on the, you know, underground railroad, but. It was because Mexico was freed, like they believed actually people were people. So, well, my last one, I'm just gonna stick to just Mexican American because I've covered also my, my a lot of these heroes. We've been doing this podcast for five or six years, so I've covered everyone that's a musician that has motivated me. We've talked several times about the writers and directors that have motivated me. So I'm just gonna do like an old school military pick. And just stick with the uh, a guy that won the Medal of Honor, and it's kind of cool because in the ar- when you join the army, they make you study like just character sheets. Like, hey, go read this, go read that, yeah. and you that's all you can read because you're in basic and there's nothing going on. <laughs> and so when I w- was reading all these letters about the uh, or these summaries about the Medal of Honor ro- winners, I was like, and then he died, and then he died, and then he died. And then he died. And I was like, damn, dude, none of these guys make it uh, make it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Medal of Honor is a award that they fucking ship to your family afterwards kind of deal. Purple heart. Yeah. Purple heart kind of shit. Although I found out it comes with a lot of good benefits. Like, Oh, the Medal of Honor or the Purple Heart? The Medal of Honor. Oh, okay. Like you can fly for free and shit? Right. Oh, ask him. <laughs> I, bro, I don't have a medal of honor. No. <laughs> hey, I, I still gotta pay for all my shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, uh, I saw a, a YouTube video that was like trying to compare like uh, the medal of honor, which is like you know America's highest honor, and the UK's highest honor is being knighted. So like, which one would you rather get? And it's like 100% medal of honor, bro. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that's something because getting knighted don't mean fuck all. <laughs> that's fair. It's like being called Jedi. <laughs> unfortunately, well, we have other kind of awards. I don't know what they are, but I remember like people were shitting on Obama when he like gave Ellen an award or something. Like you, civilians can get awards that are basically being knighted. Yeah. But um, no, um, mine is actually a dude from San Antonio. Uh, his name is Roy Benavides. Oh yeah. <gasps> <laughs> is this the the mm, like the our machine gun guy that ran through the trenches? And so he, as far as I know, I don't know if he ever ran through trenches because it was Vietnam. But he rescued a whole bunch of people. Like he kept getting uh, going in and out of the battlefield. And he just kept getting shot the entire yes! fucking time. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> I, this is the guy. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he was in the U.S. Army. He was in Special Forces. And he just gets sent to this uh, mission. Like, I think he actually got discharged. And then he was just like, fuck it. I'm joining again. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I'm pretty sure we're thinking about the same guy. Yeah, this guy's yeah. a Call of Duty level. Like. <laughs> uh, he is Doom level where, he, like, there's. He prestiged. <laughs> That's what they call it. You prestiged. 
Um, but the, like, I'll go ahead and read the Wikipedia. On May, uh, May 2nd, 1968, a 12 man Special Forces <laughs> Patrol, which included nine tribesmen, was surrounded by NVA infantry battalion of a thousand men. Benavides heard the radio appeal for help and boarded a helicopter to respond. Army, armed with only with a knife, he jumped from the helicopter, which was 30 to 40 feet off the ground, carrying his medical bag, and ran to the trap patrol. Benavides distinguished himself by a series of daring, extremely valorous actions, and because of his gallant choices that joined voluntarily, and he just kept going back. At one point in the battle, an NVA soldier accosted him and stabbed him with his bayonet. Benavides pulled it out, drew his own knife, and killed him and kept going. <laughs> <laughs> bro, that was, a, that was an NVA. Like, nah, bro. <laughs> Holy shit. We can't kill this guy. <laughs> he was the fucking Master Chief. Let's get the hell out of here. Jesus Christ. After the battle, he was evacuated from the base camp, examined, and thought to be dead. And he was placed in a body bag among the other deads. Yep. He suddenly was recognized by a friend who called for help. Doctor came and examined him and found out he was alive. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly the guy I was thinking about. But yeah, um, I just remember like hearing that was one of the craziest fucking things that like somebody could do, um, and just fucking Rambo with a knife. Just <laughs> <laughs> fucking a man. Uh, oh my god, they drew first blood, not him. <laughs> <laughs> um, President Ronald Reagan said, if, this story, if his, the story of his heroism were a movie script, you wouldn't even believe it. That's actually my favorite kind of, like, yeah. there's certain stories in history that it's just kind of like, yeah, that's, that's too good to be true. It's one of my favorite uh, Tom Clancy quotes. Uh, someone asked him, like, what's the difference between writing nonfiction and fiction? And he's like, well, with one, you have to make sure that everything is 100% by the book, completely possible and totally believable. And the other is nonfiction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, there you go. <laughs> Fucking A. My name is Peaches, and I'm the best. All the other DJs want to feel my breast. Also, Jordan. Uh, Joey the Bye. Jedi is seen by you. <laughs> He's catching strays over here. <laughs> whoa, 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 what happened? Oh, uh, because uh, you said the the title thing when it was like knighted. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> said, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yep. Well, um, thank you all for coming out. This yeah. is this has been like a little pre warm up for Lat uh, Latino Heritage Month. I'm pretty sure we'll get another one of these out before September fifteenth. Um, it is about to be football season, so football, football, football. But uh, thank you, Emiliano, for coming out. Absolutely. Always. Always a pleasure. Do you believe in Bo Nix? <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe it? A... <laughs> <laughs> That's my time, y'all. <laughs> I'm not a Cowboy fan. I do not, in fact, believe that it is our year. Um <laughs> But I also have not seen been the. On you for a while. <laughs> I have also seen the tentative depth charts and the fact that that man is third string. It's concerning. <laughs> so uh, no, I do not. I do not. But uh, shout out to whatever I don't know his fucking name. Fourth string running back. Um, we got. Uh, I'm D Denver Broncos fan. Um, uh, apparently he went to school with uh, friends' kids of mine. So, oh shit, uh, that's yeah, dope. Dope. Yeah. So they're like first name, cell phone basis. So. That's yeah, cool. My um, my homie went to school with Max Crosby, and I've always played with the idea of like asking her to ask him to be on an interview, but we don't have the technology to do that yet. Sam was like, "If you get it, I'll figure it out," and I was like, "I need to work the other way because I'm not gonna ask somebody to put themselves out there like that." I, that'd be a big thing for Sammy. I mean, especially. I think one of Paco's friends was, like, kind of involved with Mahomes' mom. Oh, yeah. I forgot that, too. <laughs> We're not supposed to put that up. Well, mm, I mean, it was just it's Tinder. It was, it was just <laughs> Tinder. Interesting. It, 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 yeah, yeah. Interesting. I, I don't know the details uh, beyond that. Just that, like, yeah, they, they matched up. Cool. <laughs> But guys, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us.